are we doing? Welcome to, again, whatever the fuck this is. Here we go. We're transforming it. We're in. We're back. Starting week three. Here we fucking go. Hello. How we doing? Yes. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm going to wait for the Twitch chat. Let's see. Good evening. Good evening. Yep. Mikey's here. We can start. Yep. That's right. We can't start without Mikey. That is That has become the, the rule, I guess, around here is that... There you go. Yeah. Get him. Get those. Get those fucking chat icons, bro. Fucking get them. I might fuck with the uh, alert sounds this week too, just a little bit. Also, Mikey, I don't know if you noticed this, but this is for you, buddy. I actually got and set up my pop filter today, so we'll see if it pop, pop, pop. How that sounds? Who cares? All right. Uh, how we doing? How you guys doing? How was your uh, your two days off? Uh, it's pretty eventful overall, wasn't it? Hello from Hibbing. Hello, Kurt. How are you? Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy the things that happened over the last few days. Uh, namely, tonight's the beginning of part of this program is going to be a little bit insider baseball for people that follow the Steel Toe Show. But given that that's most of our audience, I don't really feel bad about that. So whatever. Um, if you aren't familiar, uh, there is a show called uh, Savage Thoughts. It's uh, real fun. I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, that is where we got the famed firecracker line from, which everybody at this point is familiar with, I think. I, 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 would, I would fucking hope so. I mean, like, it's just the fucking best, right? Um, you know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to see if we can't open it. Let's see if we got this. Uh, pop? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You know what? Just for those of you that haven't seen it again, because I want to watch it all the time, we're going to open up with some fireworks. Uh, I'm on the quiet side. Is that true? I can turn it up if you want. Uh, it's for the pop filter. Yeah, I actually had this pop filter downstairs. I can't hear. Let me, let me fuck with this a little bit, because... Nothing better than watching live action people fucking with their gear, right? Am I right? Is that a little better? We're trying to, we can tilt it a little bit more too. We're trying to get it so it sounds all right. Uh, yeah. Um, so anyways, let's watch Firecrackers first because why not start out our fucking day right? Pop? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! God damn, that one popped right here in front of my face. God, I thought I was in Minneapolis for a second. Here is your fucking fireworks. Thank you, Benson Bomber, for 500 bits. God, I love that smell. To celebrate that, that 500 good. bits, we got another pack of firecrackers. Another pack of firecrackers. The remix is strong. Firecrackers! <laughs> well, the, yeah! the fucking cops aren't coming anyway. <laughs> so that's... That's the kind of intellectualism we're dealing with with this fan base. Uh, yeah, it's pretty great. Um, it's literally my favorite thing that's ever happened. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Savage Thoughts, they are broadcasting on the Steel Toe Show every Thursday on the Twitch feed. So follow Steel Toe Show. I think follow Savage Thoughts as well. I don't know if they're going to be doing anything on their own. Uh, what's the next streaming game? Uh, I've actually been streaming Witcher, but I've been doing it on YouTube. So that's a big shh. I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, Frisky. You send me a message on Facebook, and I'll, I'll hook you up with the deets. I, I can't Twitch on Twitch games because it brings down my ratio. Like, you guys are so awesome and supportive that we're averaging about 20 to 25 viewers every time we do this show. So... I have to not play Witcher online, or it lowers that, because we're trying to make partner. We made affiliate, now we're trying to make partner. Trying to get a roof over my head and keep it here. Uh, we are, a uh, little update for you, I did make rent, and that is largely in part to donations of everybody on here. I really appreciate it. I was very shocked at how generous some of you motherfuckers can be. Because I know that I'm a troll, and I know that I'm generous, but I didn't realize there were other people like that too, so fucking thank you for that. That's super rad. Uh... Also, I think we have a lead in the name of the show so far. I'm kind of falling in love with Corey Adams' Twitch, but uh, bananas. I almost said bananas. Corey Adams' Twitch corral. I think that's super fun. Uh, it's a weird, fun thing to say. So uh, yeah, whatever. 
Uh, good to hear, Corey. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for thinking. Yeah, it was it was super. I mean, I don't try to I don't try to like play it up or anything, but I mean, I was legitimately concerned about whether or not I would make rent. Uh, how can I help for the next month? Here's how you help: you go to Corey Adam Comedy at Venmo and donate. All of that money goes directly to paying my bills. I've got my bills streamlined right now to about eight hundred dollars a month, maybe more. No, eighteen because of the rent. So uh fucking car payment i wish i wish i would have known my career was gonna get nuked before i bought a new car a year ago but you know whatever you don't know that shit but uh there it is somebody followed me that's super awesome oh there it is kelly bean walters thank you for the follow uh yeah i mean it's it's one of those things where I didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, it, it's, I, I said it, I was on Score North today and I said it on there where it's like Thanos just snapped his glove and took up my ability to make money. So, uh, uh, Freaky Deek says, I got gotcha. you. I like watching the girl gamer one here. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Uh, thanks to Matt, Matt's miniature horse for hosting. That's super awesome. Uh, welcome Mr. Approachable. How are you doing? Uh, we're going to, this is, like I said, we're going to be a little bit heavy on the steel toe stuff at the beginning of this. Uh, so let's talk about this. What is your income versus bill payments right now? Well, I mean, right now it's ridiculous, right? Because my income is zero versus bills. <laughs> um, I was never one of those guys that had a lot to save. Like, I made a decent amount of money waiting tables before comedy, but you, you fall in love with a passion. I believe personally that life chooses your vocation. Uh, sometimes people choose to not follow that for more money. And that's kind of how it always is. You get more money versus what you love. Like if you want to do what you love, a lot of the times you're getting paid less. I mean, talk to teachers, they'll tell you all about it. But it's just a weird place to be in because I never thought not completing my history degree would be a mistake that I would regret in my life. When I was in college, my fucking classes were so-so. I'd rather drink. Comedy started taking off. I was making more money on the side. I thought this is what I was going to do, but it's just not really the case. And that's okay, but you never see something like coronavirus. And, and you know, I got to say, as uh, actually zero. Well, it's not actually zero. I do make money from the radio show still. So I guess I'm sitting at about five to 600 guaranteed with CD sales and comedy, maybe. I mean, here's the thing. I don't know what CD sales are going to look like. Like, in this last term, they were unaffected because the numbers weren't counted from this coronavirus. So it, it could go either way. There, it, there could be a chance that my sales go up because there's a bunch of digital content now, or it could be that it goes down. I don't really know. Um, but the reality is, who knows? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Corey Adam comedy at failed history degree dropout. Yeah, you're not wrong. That that could be an email for me. Uh, thanks for that hilarious and hurtful pot shot. <laughs> um, yeah, so currently I would say I make probably... I, I don't know, honestly. I, I should figure that out. Uh, I know that I was able to make rent uh, due to the support of people like you. <laughs> I'm like PBS with dick jokes. Thanks for support, like listeners like you. Ah, dick jokes. But that's, I wasn't expecting, I, I don't know what I was expecting, honestly. I think, I think with this COVID stuff, or sorry, SARS-2, let's only call it SARS-2. I think with SARS-2, it's amazing how unexpected a lot of this is. I don't think anybody in their heart of hearts thought that it would be what it is. And here we are. Call your show Corey's Nervous Twitch Stream. No. I really like Twitch Corral. Because, like, if you look up the word for the corral, it's, like, contained and separated, which is what we're doing. It's, like, quarantine but better. And it kind of has, like, a Pee Wee's Playhouse vibe. I'm telling you, I kind of like Twitch Corral. Twitch Bonanza don't have the same ring. That's for goddamn sure. Uh, currently dude call me we'll get we'll get around to some calls we got we got some pretty good people to call in today uh but what i wanted to do is get off the first off let's uh let's start the night out right shall we conspiracy corner we could do a conspiracy corner that's that's the other thing that i want and maybe i'll start a facebook page for this show but one of the things that i'm really noticing with this show and i think that it's better for it is that i want to shape this content for you the listeners 
I want people that are listening to have a say and have some interaction fun with this. So look for next week, we're going to do a lot more formatting. I think last week and the week before were more about getting the quality down or figuring out how we're going to do all the stuff that we're doing. And I think we've got it reasonably locked down. I mean, this, this outline panel here, like where the sound effects are and all that stuff, I think that it works pretty well for what we're doing. Uh, and that's fine. Like... Peewee? The secret word today is SARS-2. Ah! SARS-2! Ah! Yo, I mean, we could do conspiracy shit. Like I said, I want to get eventually to where we have this format. I mean, we have three hours of stuff, and it honestly goes by so fast, I don't even notice it a lot of the times. But I think if we had format-heavy stuff, people would want to join in on the days. You know, if you know, you know, let's say Sunday we're talking MMA. Monday we're doing, you know, political stuff or, or whatever. Just have it formatted to where you can follow it. Uh... I would like to say that I put in a bunch of work this weekend, but I didn't. I found this pop filter. Um, I got something streamlined, but for the most part, I was just playing Witcher. Uh, I like that game so far. I don't know how the skill trees work, so I'm actually like level 11, and I've put no points in anything. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that, so I just keep killing people. Not that anybody cares, but that's it. Um, conspiracy battle? Okay, how about this? Uh, if you guys want to talk conspiracy, let's talk conspiracy, but I feel like the SARS-2 conspiracy is old. Why don't you just write in the chat box your favorite conspiracy theory or what you want to talk about? I actually have a very good treat for you today. My buddy Joey Vincent is coming on, and he's kind of known for his conspiracy theory work. So we'll, uh, we'll get him in here, and we'll really make it, uh, pretty awesome. Because he does, uh... Take us deep into your mind on the conspiracy stuff. Well, how deep do you want? I mean, you don't know how fucked up my mind is. I mean, I could I could explain to you how George H.W. killed Kennedy, if you want. We could go down that way. Uh, I could tell you about 9-11. I feel, I feel like a lot of them are... I don't, I don't believe the really out there shit, though. I, I don't believe the moon landing was fake. Uh, I don't believe the world is flat. And you know what's funny? This is what a hypocrite I am, right? Not only do I not believe those things, but when I come across somebody that does believe in them, I ridicule them relentlessly. It's it's kind of funny, really. Like, I will believe in almost every conspiracy theory, but if you believe in one that I don't, you're a fucking idiot. That's how it goes. Uh, Mr. Approachable says, the U.S. government is pr purposely tanking the economy in preparation with a roar of Russia and China. I don't think that's happening. Um, I do think that they're prepping for a war, but they're not tanking the economy. The problem is everybody that talks about tanking the economy of China, China's economy is super fragile and they bought up a lot of our debt. So if China goes down, we go down. It's actually more beneficial to have a war with them. And I do think with the way the economy is going, we are getting prepped to have a war. That's just something that's happening. So uh, before we get started, this is kind of cool. Uh, one, so I've been getting a bunch of different like fucking copyright violations. The Alex uh, episode where we talked wrestling, that one got flagged, but only in some regions, and I don't know what regions they are. Pretty funny. Uh, Bly Dog says Area 51. Oh, yeah, Bob Lazar. I could talk aliens all day. Area 51 isn't a conspiracy theory. It's basically a declassified truth at this point. I mean, that's that's how it works. Pretty great. Um, MK Ultra and the Unabomber. I don't, I don't know that one. Did you hit one that I don't know? I don't know about any of that. That's pretty good. Um, before we get uh, the show really rolling here, though, I think we want to have a little bit of fun. And I don't know if you know Mark Malman. Mark Malman is a local artist. He's a good guy. He's very fun. And he wrote a song about being in quarantine. So uh, we're going to listen to a little Mark Malman as he talks about his quarantine experience through song and dance. Here we go. You ready? Did you ever get the feeling that you'd been quarantined? That's if anybody has any feelings anymore these days You know what I mean I've been staring at the street Watching all you people Life is not a video screen But maybe I'm wrong It started with the dawn Weather, no, my enemies, I'll get along with 
sun till you try it. I ain't messing with that Kool Aid man. I guess I'm on a diet. This what happens with Pop Rock and Kittle. It's not the end of me. I will live again. I will return when the streets are clean. I will be freed back to the scene. Sometimes you gotta tear it up and sometimes you just gotta bleed. Maybe the greatest Godzilla movie ever, right? Or worst, I guess, depending on your opinion. But that is Mark Mullman's Quarantine. Uh, I saw that and thought it was pretty funny. Uh, SARS 2 never started. Yeah. Why don't you tell me when it started then? You're the Patriot. Uh, Bermuda Triangle, yeah, Bermuda Triangle is a good one. Is Tom a conspiracy? Tom is not a conspiracy theory. Tom never existed. That's probably fake. Tom's fake cancer. It's Jacob is the one with fake cancer. Uh, Tom lives on a ranch with a hundred gallons of potable water, and a silo full of tortillas, and eight pieces of. Come here, Charles. I don't. Whatever. Who cares? Fuck yourself. I heard they need stars too. Uh, just pissed all over my toilet laughing. Don't worry. I'm cleaning it up. Washing my hands thrice. Yeah, you better. You better wash your hands thrice. First it was Kenny Rogers, then it's Joe Diffie. Which country? I don't know, but, uh, Bill Withers died. You like how I, you like how I just leaned right fucking into it? Like, that's, that's what we're doing now. We're just, we're just going to town. We're just leaning on this shit. Uh, I actually wasn't even going to talk about this, but here we go. Bill Withers, uh, died. Uh, I don't think... I don't think it was, like, COVID, but, like, in this age of SARS-2, if you die, it's going to be attributed to it, right? But he's saying, ain't no sunshine when she's gone, lean on me, a bunch of other stuff. Real, uh, real upbeat love tunes out of that guy. <laughs> ain't no sunshine when she leans on me because she's dead. Uh, let's see here. I'm just trying to see if it says what he died of. Yeah, it didn't. Whatever. Yeah. R.I.P. Bill Withers. Ain't no sunshine when you're dead. Yeah, we're just on a real roll of caring today, aren't we? Pretty uh, pretty nice. Pretty good. Pretty good and caring tonight. Um, speaking of good and caring, so this is what I wanted to talk about, right? Uh... Johnny had, like, so, okay, we were talking about the, the Savage Thoughts. Savage Thoughts podcast happens every week. Uh, they're in a garage. They get drunk. They have a real hoot nanny of a podcast. It's super fun. I think we all really enjoy it, and it's it's a good time. Um, that being said, the Steel Toe Show, uh, evening show, has actually moved over to their studio, which means now Aaron and Johnny are getting way drunker than they used to, making us listen to karaoke and all that shit. Who cares? But... If you watched Wednesday's episode, and if you remember the Steel Toe Show page, you can go back and watch it. Uh, Johnny basically, it was like a giant cry for help drunkenly. Thanks, Bly Dog, for the bits. And uh, I'm pretty, like, I don't know if worried's the right word. Like, here's my thing, right? I love Johnny. I don't want him to die. I hope he doesn't. That's, that's bad. That being said, I've never known anyone that's killed themselves that talked about it. Everybody, and I've had, I mean, I'm a stand-up comedian. I've had people kill themselves. It's happened. I've had accident, incidental overdoses. I've had people shoot themselves in the face. I've had friends hang themselves. I've had all of it. And the one thing that they all had in common, every single one of them, is they didn't talk about it beforehand. Now, personal experience is anecdotal, so that's just me. That's probably not the way it's supposed to go, but it is just what? Uh, yeah, Sarge, Bill, Bill Withers died today. That's true. Uh... First Kenny Rogers, Joe Diffie. Why does everybody care that Joe Diffie died? I Hot take. Who cares? Fuck Joe Diffie. I said it. What's up? Uh, I hope Tom gets taken care of. Yeah. Rest in peace, Bill. Dude's song are timeless. Hey, Bill. Yeah, hi to Tom. Concern. Yeah, I mean, I, like... I would say with Johnny, it's concern a little bit, right? But I don't know what to do about it, so... I think we're just gonna call him and check in on him every single show that we're on the air. Uh, I prepared a little suicide watch music for this. Uh, let's see. I don't even know if he's home yet. Let's, let's find out. Let's, uh, 
He's usually in bed and sleeping around now. He's probably like in the can, drunk as he does. Press F for mental health in the chat. That's nice. That's very nice of you guys. You guys are very nice today. Let's uh, let's go. It actually here. Before we do it, uh, I found. If you've ever seen the movie Heather's, here's a little. Song. Teenage suicide. Yeah. Typing you alive. There we go. So he didn't answer. So maybe, maybe, maybe this joke is poignant and terrible now. Who knows? Uh, yeah, the song is on point. That's from Heather's. Yeah, Johnny passed away. Press F for Johnny in the chat. Uh, that's pretty good, right? Johnny's in the shitter. How do you like? Are you spying on him? You said that way too quick to know. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Um. I had it all queued up. Dark of my lights out. Please pull this gun out of my mouth. Teenage suicide. What? What? Teenage suicide. Yeah. There we go. All right. Well, you know what? We'll circle back to that one. That one's fine. Whatever. Um, we have a lot of callers, but I don't really, I don't know. You guys ever just have one of those days where you just don't have the energy for it? I just, I don't really care. Kind of glad you didn't answer it'd probably just be like what up dog you killing yourself what's up girl mm. trying to get the phone perhaps yeah maybe maybe he's trying to pick it up with his legs because <laughs> they don't work get it <laughs> um oh he's seen it he's seen it he is alive he's seen it okay well good that concludes our uh our check on him i guess uh We can, uh, we don't have a caller. We do have, uh, we do have a, a thing that says he has seen it. You know how when you send something in Facebook, you can see seen it? So he's seen it. We know, we know he's alive at least. That's, that's what we know. Uh, maybe a certain caller could pick up the energy needed. What, is this your way of saying, yeah, you want to call in again? What do you, like... We already had you on here. What are you going to talk about? I like, I have professional comics that I haven't had on here twice, but you're going to be the guy. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that, man. I don't believe you can fix this energy, buddy. Me, motherfucker, me, me, motherfucker, me. Um, <laughs> message him again. I see you've seen this. Good. Glad I am happy. You are here. Call in if you want. Here's a real old one. Plur. Anybody remember Plur? Yeah, I think it's weird. All right. Uh, hi. Yeah, let's see here. We are 30 minutes in. Uh, I wasn't going to do this till later on in the show, but uh, everybody wish Mikey Two Milks a happy birthday. Today is actually his birthday. He might have kept that a little bit. I wanted to make sure we got a little bit deep into this episode before it went all fucking wonky with fucking birthday. Uh, taxes, murder, send me a message on Facebook. Just say hi or whatever. We'll see if we can uh, pop you on there or whatever. Um, does anybody know, does Johnny, what's Johnny's Twitch handle? It would be Johnny. We would see him in the chat, right? I was going to say maybe he was watching and he was like, no. But that shit got super dark the other night. I, like, it was really weird, right? Yeah, happy birthday, Mikey. 
Ah, uh, that's super awesome. Someone saw it. That's all we know. Yeah, maybe maybe they're just going through a shit or something. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck was that? All right, where are we at? I gotta I gotta see. I have these guests all figured out. The problem is, you tell people. Oh. You tell people to call in, and then they say yeah, and they all want around the same time. It's pretty dumb, but whatever. There we go. Let's do another news story while we're waiting, shall we? Uh, this is something that Reason put up about the 10 public safety regulations that they set aside in the name of public safety over the coronavirus. This is actually really funny. Uh, if you want to know how stupid your government is, watch how they flow in the message of... You'll call in. I'll probably be too busy. Oh, shit. My Nuts Your Chin is now hosting. Thanks, Tom. Tom will fucking crush your B-Day for sure. That's right. Happy B-Day, Tom. Tom, happy B-Day. Mikey Two Toms, happy birthday. Uh, thank you, My Nuts Your Chin, for hosting. Super awesome. Really appreciate that. Uh, thanks for the bits, Mikey Two Milks. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, we're, I mean, it's just... It's really weird and harrowing. Let's watch this story, and then we'll get back to talking about all the other stuff, shall we? Uh, whoa, somebody used a birthday present? I didn't even know you could do that shit. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, here. Politicians and bureaucrats spend a lot of their time making new laws and regulations. So po this is basically what... I mean, this is a very good breakdown on reason. Um, this is about the safety regulations that have been in place that were taken away because of coronavirus. So think about that. We're in a pandemic and they're taking away shit. Just, just think about that. Politicians and bureaucrats spend a lot of their time making new laws and regulations to protect the public. But now that shit has really hit the fan, even the government is realizing how many of those are unnecessary. Here are 10 measures created in the name of public safety that have been set aside in the name of public safety. Alright, you know what? You're right. That's on me. I should have muted the alert sounds first. Thank you for hosting, Mikey. I appreciate it. The alert box is off while we watch this video now, so fucking suck it, guys. Here we go. Wait, did that work? I can't even fucking tell anymore. No, it didn't. I fucked it up, didn't I? Yeah, that's what... There we go. See? See, I caught it that time, though. Boom. Here we go. Politicians and bureaucrats spend a lot of their time making new laws and regulations to protect the public. But now that shit has really hit the fan, even the government is realizing how many of those are unnecessary. Here are 10 measures created in the name of public safety that have been set aside in the name of public safety. The CDC testing monopoly is perhaps the biggest and most obvious cluster f on the list. The agency mandated that only it could create and distribute tests, and when they finally did roll them out, they turned out to be painfully slow and wildly inaccurate. Only after this colossal failure did they allow private companies into the game, which has led to more testing kits that deliver faster results. If only that had happened months ago. HHS is issuing a regulation today. So the thing about this that's super interesting, and we'll break all these down point by point, but one of the reasons and one of the tenets of being a libertarian is the private business stuff. Uh, what am I drinking tonight? Same thing I'm drinking most nights, baby. Little Summit EPA. Mm. God, it just, it tastes like the home team, you know? But this video is interesting, and this is a very good point about how the CDC went out of their way to make sure to monopolize everything when it comes to testing, the results, everything has to go through proper channels. Because of that, the response time was way lower. Now, people are going to blame all kinds of other stuff for this. Like, you'll see people blame the president, they'll blame Democrats, they'll blame Republicans. But the reality is, this is broken infrastructure that's been in place forever. And now that we're in the height of an emergency, they're like, oh, maybe we don't need it. Yeah, maybe we didn't need it the whole fucking time. You goddamn fucking wenches. All right, back. Here's number two. That will allow all doctors and medical professionals to practice across state lines. That is. Wait, why the fuck wasn't that like, so doctors weren't allowed to practice at all? Like, this is fucking garbage. Fantastic news, except for the fact that HHS doesn't have that kind of authority. Each state has jurisdiction over who can practice there. Not surprisingly, HHS has been pretty quiet about the issue, but at least some states have waived restrictions, making it easier for doctors to be doctors. 
You know things are serious when the TSA is easing stupid restrictions. Since 2006, the agency said that having more than 3.4 ounces of liquid in a container was super dangerous on airplanes. But now that actual danger is around and no one is flying, hand sanitizer in 12-ounce bottles is A-OK. -okay. Yeah, Speaking this, one, of hand this sanitizer one was super fucking hilarious uh, to me. Uh, as somebody that flies a lot, or at least I used to, we'll see if I get flying again. Uh, they literally told us that those liquids were super hazardous and we couldn't have them anything over 3.5 the moment this shit came out any hands i'm pretty sure you could get away with bringing a lysol aerosol bottle on a flight right now because nobody's flying because everybody's scared and that makes sense but you can get you can get tickets to like vegas from minnesota not that vegas is on but like they're like 20 or 40 bucks it's fucking crazy you can go travel by a plane for less than it takes you to drive like down to the cities and back up to st cloud it's fucking crazy Here's some good news from the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, also known as the TTB, because, well, I don't know. Distilleries around the country can now make hand sanitizer without jumping through a metric fuck ton of red tape, including permits, bonds, authorization, formula approval, and taxes. These waivers are only approved through June 30th, however, after which that same hand sanitizer might once again be very dangerous. Are you paying attention? Breweries weren't allowed to make hand sanitizer, even though they have all the fucking equipment. Are you fucking kidding me? Anyone who makes or sells alcohol is well versed in ridiculous and counterproductive regulation, but with the crushing blow social distancing brings to restaurants, at least one strip of red tape is being snipped. State and local governments are lifting bans on alcohol home delivery, which is welcome news to bars, restaurants, and anyone stuck at home paying attention to the news. The FDA has been easing a bunch of restrictions, including relaxing rules on ventilator manufacturing, allowing pharmacists to make hand sanitizer, declaring previously unapproved respirators as totally safe now, allowing outside groups to make diagnostic tests, easing access to antiviral drugs, allowing the use of medical devices that remotely measure vital signs, and allowing veterinarians to utilize telemedicine, which was previously prohibited because, well, I don't know. Medicare is now paying for telemedicine visits, which makes a lot of sense for people who can't leave their house easily or are at greater risk of infection, which, come to think of it, is basically everyone who was on Medicare to begin with. HHS said that even though they don't fully conform to HIPAA rules regarding privacy and security, doctors may now use Skype and FaceTime for telemedicine, because the future is now, or at least it was 17 years ago. Numerous states are freeing nonviolent offenders who are put behind bars for technical violations or because they simply couldn't afford bail. Site and release policies are also being enacted across the country, keeping low-level offenders out of jail if there is no risk to the community. And it's a pretty damning admission by authorities that for a long time they've been just fine with locking people up who pose no risk to the community. And plastic bags are back, baby. After a hot and heavy fling with reusable grocery bags, politicians are waking up to realize that canvas totes have a secondary function as microbial party buses. So what once was banned is now required <laughs> and vice versa. In the name of public safety, subject to change. So this is, this is like kind of the stuff I'm talking about a lot of the times when you hear me talk about libertarian stuff. It, it's really crazy. Um, because... All this shit was put in place to make our lives more difficult. It's why I don't really like the FDA. It's why I hate the fucking Department of Education. And the moment that this became a hazard, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all this shit that was banned for whatever reason is now totally cool. I mean, it's fucking garbage. Uh... Ooh. Oh, okay. Shower up, buddy. Johnny just hit me back. He's showering. That's kind of cool. All right. Uh... Oh, it's our first, uh, looks like our first guest might be ready. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I want to find a really good picture of this asshole. She just done a deep dive. You ever just hit a deep dive on somebody and you're like, oh God, I shouldn't have done that. Um, all right, let's go here. How are we doing guys? We got, uh, we got it coming right for you. Here we go. Uh. Tell Johnny Pixar it didn't happen. I'm not going to tell him that. You tell him that. What the hell kind of dumpster fire did I just stumble into? The best kind of dumpster fire, motherfucker. What are you talking about? The same dumpster fire you've been falling into for going on three weeks. This is our third fucking week, bitches. That's fucking dope. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to find a good one. Ooh, that one's pretty good. I like that one. That's the one we're using. Save image. Bloop. Mm 
Is it fun watching me hum while I do computer shit? I bet it is. I bet the ratings are through the fucking roof, you fucking weirdos. Suck a fucking dick. All right. Um. No. Yeah, you walked into the best, the best trash fire, my friend. Um. All right. Let's let's give our buddy Lucas a call, shall we? Here we go. Boom. Boom. Hello. Hello. Hey. What up, buddy? I'm doing all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. You're uh, you're on the you're on the air on Twitch. Oh, excellent. Hey, how's everyone going? How's it going for everyone? How's everyone going? Yeah, good. One. Yes. How's everyone going? It's, Identify it's yourself one of those... to the people, Lucas. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm Lucas Ramsey. Uh, I've been doing some stand up at uh, in the Twin Cities for a couple of months. Jason Mimosa and, uh, Light. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have a, a a passing resemblance to Jason Momoa, uh, and I hope that's not my uh, most striking feature. But, well, uh, I mean, as somebody that's seen your act, I would say it's at least in the top five. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's definitely it doesn't hurt. I I think. Yeah. How you how you doing in all this, man? You know, I'm getting by. It's it's kind of wild. Um, I found that uh, I, I was really starting to hit my stride, um, kind of getting in contact with uh, some of the, the comedians. and the, Yeah, that's the actually, that's why, and... that's why I wanted to talk to you specifically on this show is because mm-hmm. I've had a lot of comics that lost their livelihood and, like, this was their day job and stuff, and we talked about that. Mm-hmm. But you're one of the people, you and uh, Max, Max Chapman is kind of like that too, where I saw a, a big push for a lot of the newer people coming into comedy and you seemed like mm-hmm. one of the people that was really starting to piece it together. And now yeah. now we all just get to sit at home and fucking <laughs> in two months you get to start all over from square one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, I mean, it's frustrating. Uh, don't get me wrong. But uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's confusing because, like, there's not anything to compare this to. You know what I mean? This yeah, well, not, I, think, uh... I think that's the hardest part for everybody when it comes to this is, like, what, you know, if you've lived in America your whole life, you've never experienced anything like this ever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's, that's exactly the case. I remember when I, uh, when this was starting to go down with the, first with the social distancing and then the shelter-in-place orders and things like that, it's like I'm asking my parents, you know, is this anything you guys have you been following have all before? the, like, social distancing shit? Uh, I'd say for the most part. I mean, it, it helps that I, like, am, like really fucking nerdy and really somebody's uh, asking if you're related to dave ramsey dave ramsey i've heard that all ramseys are related uh in america i i can't uh claim to be directly related i grew up, I grew up with a guy named geyser ramsey <laughs> geyser that's a yeah good that's one. we called him guy and if you called him geyser he'd beat the fuck out of you well he'd try he'd beat the fuck out of everybody <laughs> but me but i played rugby so he couldn't do shit there you i, I oh I, I never knew you played rugby yeah, man. I was a prop until I got sick of my ears being pulled, and then I went to hooker. All right, all right. Why well, are you a rugby? Cool. Are I, you a rugby guy as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I never, I, I never I played a lot. Who'd you play for? Yeah. Uh, so I played for St. John's when I was in college. Oh uh, yeah, this is then... actually most of our viewers here are up in the St. Cloud area, so they know the Johnnies very well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, graduated in 2014, so I was there my junior and senior year with the the years that we uh, did the the Enstro Nationals. Nice. I did and the. Then, uh, I was on the St. Paul Pigs years ago. Uh, all right. Until they found out that I was lying about having insurance. <laughs> oh yeah. Here's the fucked up uh... part. Here's the fucked up part. The Minneapolis Metropolis or whatever. Mm-hmm. They yeah. were trying to recruit me, knowing that I got kicked off of the pigs for no insurance. <laughs> oh man, that's uh, that's hilarious. I, I was in Omaha. I actually was on Metropolis or uh, played with Metropolis for uh, for a few months. Yeah, I never uh, actually all... played with them, but a bunch of my friends did, so they were trying to headhunt mm-hmm. me. I never I never did it because I was like, well, if they're telling me I shouldn't do this without insurance, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely a risk. But is, I mean, so okay, how exactly. Long, how long have you been doing comedy? All right, so that's that's and like not, I, and not your bullshit like when you would show up once in six months. I'm saying like in the last, I would say three or four months, I have seen you actually grinding like a comedian. 
Yeah. Well, it's like I I'd say I started a grind sometime last year. I want to say it was in like October, November, sometime late. Cause like I, I was almost kind of proud that I, I felt like I started grinding before the new year. Cause like <laughs> a lot of good that it, did it, asshole. <laughs> well, exactly. I, I still get the moral superiority. And if you don't have that, I mean, what can you, what can you fall back on? Right. Well, and so, okay. So how, when, when did you first take the stage? First time ever. First time ever, I remember at some time during college, I was like, ooh, it'd be so fun to do stand-up. And I did it during, like, a, a one of those open mics that aren't at all about comedy. And where, where was this so at? What's, what city? This, this was at, this was at uh, College of St. Benedict in, in St. Joseph. There was an open mic at College of St. Benedict? It wasn't a comedy one. That's the thing. It's like everyone was like playing guitar and like doing spoken word poetry. And then I just oh, went up God. there. Oh, God. Isn't that the jokes. fucking worst? One, <laughs> of, the was, worst, one it... of the worst comedy sets I ever had in my life. There used to be mm-hmm. a place in St. Paul called the Artist Quarter. Mm-hmm. And they would do a pure open mic every Monday. Yeah. So we would go out to Acme. And this is a lot of my, like me and Alvin Irby used to go there. A bunch of comics that you know. We yeah. We would go to Acme. We would not get up because that's what happens at Acme. Yeah, yeah. And then we would go over to the artist quarter and they would make you buy two drinks, but they would give you six minutes. All right. Yeah. Which is a large amount of time for a new comic. Mm-hmm. And I remember one time I went there and I literally had to follow a guy that was doing a poem about his dead brother who died suddenly oh, of a complication of his lung cancer. Oh my this god. This guy kept crying as he smoked cigarettes, saying every drag tasted like his brother dying. Oh, that's a weird taste to get a so dick. So then I get that. up on there and I'm like, hey, who wants to hear some dick jokes? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I mean the pure open mics can go really awry. Yeah, yeah. And even definitely. if you're following like a guitar, I mean I don't even like following guitar comics at comedy places. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely, it's a different vibe, you know? And I think that's one of the things that's made this, this whole situation is weird is that like social distance comedy, like radio comedy, streaming comedy, all of that. It's so different than stand up. It's such a different beast. Well, yeah. I mean, and that's, I don't know. Like, I think, I think the social distancing mics and I've done, have you done any of them yet? I haven't, but like, I haven't pushed to do them either. Right. Well, I mean, I did one, I did my first one on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't want to. It was Andrew and Rebecca's one, and I'm not like I'm gonna talk shit about it, but it has nothing to do with them. Yeah, I think yeah. that theirs was actually a little bit better because it's hosted by two people, so you actually mm-hmm. get laughter, and that's kind of important. But yeah, no, that I makes think sense. like there's a lot of people that are doing these social distancing mics, and I think it's gonna fuck them over when shit goes back to normal. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. like, all the timing and stuff is going away. Yeah, That's why, and it's like, like... something like this is so cool because, like, so what I did for me was... Because I'm, I'm a professional comic. Before this, I waited tables. I don't get to have a profession right now. Yeah. So I literally started a three-hour-a-night Twitch show Friday through Tuesday. That's what you're on right now. We haven't thought of a name. Yeah. I'm leaning on Corey Adams' Twitch Corral. Twitch corral. Yeah, because like if you look up the word corral, it kind of means quarantine, but nobody wants the word quarantine in there. <laughs> I, the thing though is, or, I that, I, I or like... my other, my second name was Luke Ramsey's a bitch. That I mean, that would probably get better name recognition, but sure. And then if you came at me, I could yell at you because it says Luke, not Lucas. See, that's how you, exactly. that's how you infringe on a copyright. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I think. If it if it led anyone to me, I I'd consider it a win, even if they're calling me a bitch. Yeah. I, so what are you any, like? Any, what are you doing to try to stay? So so okay, you, your first. So when was your first mic? Like what 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 year was that? Two years ago? Three years ago? It's something like that. I don't I don't know. It's like what, it's like I did one mic, mic. When was your first mic down here? When did you come back to it? Uh, about I want to say like five six seven months something like that somewhere around a half a year year mark sure half a year ago because i mean like it's it's got to be frustrating for you making strides and it seems like i mean I, i've definitely just as an onlooker i've definitely seen you look like you're more committed to it now than you were when i first saw you mm-hmm. 
Like mm-hmm. when I first saw you do comedy, you weren't you weren't unfunny, but nobody's funny when they start. You were okay. But yeah. you really had this aura of like hobby comic where it's just kind of something yeah. you're trying, you didn't really care. But I feel like in the last couple months I've seen you really just grind down and like try to uh you know, really, really get out there. And that's why, like, I wanted to talk Mm -hmm. to you because it's got to be upsetting because it it really, on the outward, looked like you were hitting your stride. And now it's like, oh, by the way, you Mm -hmm. have no legs. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And it's it's a strange, I think, uh, sort of situation, obviously. But, like, uh, I'm – I'll say I'm, like, frustrated. I'm not, I think, like, too tore up about it insofar as, like – how do I put this? Like, the the grinding and the attitude that's something that I that I have learned and a lot of a lot of what was happening wasn't just that I uh, was kind of putting my nose to the grindstone but I was learning a lot you know what I mean and you can obviously you can unlearn a bit but there are certain ways of like looking at things certain ways of knowing things that once you once you know that it's kind of a quick quicker to get back on you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, you, you learn the skills of, uh, how to like ride a bike or something like that. And you don't lose those skills, even though, you know, I, I don't know. I, though. Like, I feel bike. like comedy isn't like that because I feel like a lot of it is simply repetition. You get used to it. Like there yeah. is a rust factor sometimes. Oh, for sure. For sure. In in the same way, I, when I was younger, like high school age, I could do like 30 K 50 K bike races. I can't do <laughs> that's a weird put flex. Me I know, right? Well, it's 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 a non-flex insofar as if you put me on a bike now, holy shit! I don't think I could go, you know, three or four miles without just like dying and uh, dying in my own sweat. I would like to see that. <laughs> I would, uh, if if things ever get real bad, I would give to your Patreon to observe that. Just just to observe me dying. Yeah. Uh, drowning in my own sweat. So what do you what do you do for day work though? You have an actual job, right? Yeah, yeah. I uh I'm a sales development representative. So, oh, so just I working mean, at home, no big deal. Sales calls from home. It's I mean, it's 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 a weird situation because I hated it in a in a really acceptable way, you know what I mean, where it's like, "Oh, I got my job." Oh, it's this income is like not... a noose around my checkbook. I hate it. Well, not not that, but you know, it's like Oh, you know, got the day job, got to have the day job, and it, that was fine. And then uh, it's com- coming here, it's like you're both more thankful for it, and then it's also more tedious. So you, you really have to be like, I'm, I'm really glad that I'm able to make ends meet. I, I also really don't, like, necessarily enjoy the, the space of what sales is. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's not, it's not going to stop me. Yeah. What do you so? What are you doing for comedy to try to stay? Are you just basically ignoring it then, or what are you trying to do to try I, to stay on your chops, as it were? It's not so much ignoring it. Um, for me, it's I guess like studying it because uh, you know I'm following some of the what other com- comedians are doing, trying to take some notes on what I like, what I don't like, uh, some of the similar stuff that when I went to shows, um, but then also doing you know not just the live comedy, but some of the classic comedy, trying to get into, you know, suggestions and listening to people who are like, oh, you know, you really have like to watch. improv or what? No, not improv. Like uh, like old uh, Comedy Central specials or things like that. Okay, like, where... what? like what? Give us some stuff. What are you, so, some what stuff? What have you been doing? I mean, I've been watching a, a little bit of, uh, like, Rob Hedberg. And, um, Rob Hedberg? You mean Mitch Hedberg? I, my brain stopped working. Rob Hedberg. You've been watching a lot yes. of Rob Hedberg? Rob Hedberg. That's exactly it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I've i been watching a little bit of Mitch Hedberg. I've been watching a little bit of, like, Dave Chappelle. Um, so it's, it's not as much, I think, as I should be doing. Uh, I think I'm mostly kind of, like, writing, and that's kind of the way I've uh, been able to keep those, like, creative energies going. And then I guess, like, when things kind of can open up, I want to, like, start over, but then hit that grind as hard as I can. Because you're trying to be the next Rich Hedberg. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the, the next Robert Hedberg. <laughs> Robert Hedberg now, huh? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I mean, that's that's important, though. Like, I, like at least you have a plan. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't have a plan. Because I, I see well, people with these mics, and 
like the whole thing with it is that they're they're literally like like how do i say this without being super critical i don't know so i'm just gonna say it because that's what i do anyways but like it seems like a lot of this is a fool's errand when it comes to trying to stay on top of it you know like on the surface these social distancing open mics are so people don't feel rusty but the reality is mm -hmm. it's just a fucking like it's just a like conference call and it's not stand-up comedy at all yeah yeah i agree with that and i see what... you know i'm not going to name any names but i've seen four or five people on facebook basically reorganizing and reprepping and basically putting up the social distancing mics that they'll be at as if they were gigs mm-hmm and that's, to me, you know, that's why I wanted to talk to you, and I'll, I'll try to get a hold of, like, Max or Stanley. Like, the main yeah. thing with, like, as you get better and as you're turning this corner is that there's going to be so many bad habits picked up and learned over these social distancing mics. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the big things we have in our city is we already have, you know, and again, I'm not going to name names or anything. We already have a syndicate of comics with very, very bad ticks. Like, hey, you guys, hmm, did you see this, huh? Hey, hmm? Tell a fucking yeah. joke. Comedy is about well, word I... economy. We have Tim Harmston and Mary Mack here. You can watch them and really understand exactly how to do it. And this this is only going to mm -hmm. hurt that. Yeah, yeah. And I I find that it's a it's a situation where, like, not everyone's necessarily I think doing it to get better. I think a lot of people. Um, also, some of the reason they're doing the mics is because they're doing it kind of because they need that, uh, I don't know, that rush, that feeling. Uh, you know, they, they need that feeling of getting it out there or putting it out there. I guess like the, the stand-up therapy type. Sure. But you don't feel like you need that? It's not so much that I don't need it. It's that, like, when it comes to that, uh, taking care of that, I have other, like, channels that I can go through. Like, I, I like to write fiction you know, I like to draw. I like to do like uh, Dungeons and Dragons and like. Whoa! Look games. at you, yeah. ladies, yeah. man. Oh yeah, exactly. I like to draw and be in Dungeons and Dragons. That's that's the beauty, though. I can only in, I'm only making fun of you because I've spent the last three days only playing Witcher. Only Witcher. All right. Now, are you playing Witcher properly, or are you getting? Are you doing just the Gwent? Well, okay. Look, here's here's the thing. Uh, I had never played Witcher 3, right? We'll, we'll get we'll get <laughs> hardcore into some Witcher talk now. This is yeah. actually the only reason... I know you're a geek, so I wanted you here for some hardcore Witcher talk. <laughs> uh, no, so what happened was... Uh, I played Witcher way back in the day, and I hated it. I thought Witcher 1 was garbage, right? Mm -hmm. I never played Witcher 2, and then I never played Witcher 3 because I hated Witcher, right? Mm -hmm. So then, as this quarantine was coming down, I went to my... Uh, my target by my house and you know it's funny for all the fucking stored up stuff that people didn't get all the video games were gone like people are gonna <laughs> fucking be eating mario games i guess like they were all fucking garbage gone but so i ended up grabbing a madden game which is like the first madden game i bought in like ever i still haven't even installed it but i i, I was holding witcher and it's like the complete with all the add-ons one like game of the year yeah. or whatever yeah and i was like all right fine i'll play this and so i popped it in I've been playing it, and I don't understand anything about the leveling system. Mm -hmm. So I'm level 11, and I haven't spent a single skill point. <laughs> uh, but I did then come across, like, realizing that I did enjoy playing Gwent, because I'm a big Magic the Gathering guy. Not a lot of people know that about me, but I have a very extensive Ooh. Magic the Gathering collection. Mm -hmm. And Gwent just touches all the bases for my uh, Magic the Gathering habit, I guess. Yeah. And then and then once I figured out you could play people for money and get items, it's like, oh, well, I guess I'm playing Gwent for four hours. Yeah, yeah. It's, that... it's weird uh, the way, like, with some of this game design stuff that, like, uh, the the side games or the side quests just take so much precedence. Cause it's well, like... I think it's interesting, and I think they did a really good job at Witcher. Because I – so I grew up playing Fallout. Like, Fallout 1 and 2 were my jam, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, Bethesda, when Bethesda bought out Fallout and they turned it into, like, the multi-online Skyrim Elder Scrolls type game, like, yeah. I don't know what it is about Bethesda, but there's something about the way they do their inventory system that I just don't like, because it feels like you get halfway through the game and then you're spending 30 to 40 minutes on just, like, upkeep. You're not even playing the game. 
Mm-hmm. And the thing that I think I really enjoy about Witcher is they do a really good job of giving you all of the options, but aside from repairing your gear, you don't really have to do any of it if you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty fun, though. Have you played Witcher? Are you a witching guy? I I have not played it myself. I have I have a friend who uh, he plays when I come over, and uh, so I've like seen seen some of the game played through. All right. Do you have you played have you played a round of Gwent? Are you a Gwent connoisseur? A little bit. I was gonna say I think it's it's kind of fun that you that you compared it to Magic the Gathering. I'm a, I play some Magic the Gathering myself. Oh shit! And, uh, yeah, shit. There is I that... smell a wizard's duel coming. God, we're geeks. I know, right? That's that's like one of the things about it, though, is I I feel like overcoming the uh, the geekdom and just sort of being uh, proud to let my geek flag fly was something that uh, really helped me out. Just in, I mean, not just in comedy, but in all the other bits where it's yeah. like I can you, it's it's so. And I, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna go and and nerd out about comedy a little bit now, which is probably why you called me. But uh, I it's. It's it's strange that you have to kind of be on both sides of this coin where you have to be indifferent about something but then also care about it very deeply. Yes. And, and Well that's so... that's kind of the duality of like everything right now, right? Like even mm-hmm. coronavirus. You have to stay home and not be worried about it, but you have to care enough to not leave your house. Otherwise old people will die, even though most young millennials have been talking about killing the elderly for years. Or at least themselves. Yeah, themselves and the elderly. <laughs> fucking get drunk, take your grandparents for a cruise, let's fucking come up with some political solutions. Exactly. And, I mean, the the cruises are so cheap now, too. It is kind of cool that we're probably going to lose some politicians over this. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, though, I... I 79 seen... thank you for the subscription. Really appreciate it. I was going to say, I, I know uh, I, that uh, you're a pretty ardent libertarian. And, I am, that's uh, I think, true. What was, uh, was it Rand Paul, I think, uh, came down with it as well. Yeah, he? whatever. His dad, like, if his dad got it, I'd be more sad. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not, like, the, well, thing, about, the thing about Rand Paul is that mm-hmm. he is a libertarian, but he's he's the wrong kind of libertarian. Like, the problem with libertarian, like, so here's, here's my unpacking of libertarianism, right? First right. and foremost... Uh, I hate almost all other libertarians, which I feel like makes me the most libertarian. You know what I mean? Like, like I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I could see that. And I'm actually, I know that you're not watching this on a stream, but I've actually got a fucking "Don't Tread on Me" flag behind me. That's my backdrop for this show. So it's kind of funny you brought that up. But the, the real thing with me personally and libertarianism is that, I. At a very young age, I, I was going to go get a history degree. That's what I was going to be a history teacher of all things. That's what I was going mm-hmm. to do with my life. And I got to this point when I was like 19 where through enough research in history, because as we know, history repeats itself, right? Uh, our government is bogged down with so much broken infrastructure that no mm-hmm. amount of more infrastructure that you add can be the solution. So then it has to be... The idea that, okay, now we need less government. And even though the Republicans say they want less government, they don't. They grow government as much as the Dems. And I, I'm not going to hold the Democrats responsible for growing government because guess what? That's within their ideology. Yeah. What's yeah. really cool to see is, and, and it's, it's not, we, we actually had a vignette that I played earlier on this episode, but it's interesting to see how many libertarian solutions have come out of this government that's constantly brainwashing people that libertarianism is bad. Look at the CDC. The CDC could not keep up on tests. Once they released their restrictions and let private businesses do them, all of a sudden we had tests in every state. Mm-hmm. Like the the private like the problem is is that we've had too much legislation making monopolies. So an entirely free mm-hmm. market is not really feasible at this point in our society. But if you start from scratch, like like the government is big business, and that's the thing people don't understand. The government is the only business on the planet that can legislate against its competition. So like when, if I decide like, I don't want you to do something, I can pass laws that say you can't do it. Nowhere else in the mm-hmm. realm of competition or marketplace is that possible but the government. And again, you look at um, look at ventilators. They have had restrictions on ventilators and who could manufacture them, even though there's been PDF files that people could use on any 3D printer to make a ventilator. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, if those restrictions, which they were lifted now, all of a sudden, boom. Uh, look at the TSA. TSA doesn't even exist in San Francisco. They never have. They never adopted a TSA in San Francisco. San Francisco mm. has one of the lowest crime rates of any known airport. And when TSA went on strike, guess what was the only airport that operated fine? There's all this broken infrastructure. But my point being is that Rand Paul is one of these weird new wave libertarians that hides mm. under being a Republican. They're yeah. not really libertarians, but they say they are. In Rand Paul's case, he has to because his dad. And, and Ron Paul was a very, very instrumental force. And I think going yeah. forward, you're going to see the new parties merge into something that's more libertarian versus socialism. And that's okay. The compromise mm -hmm. in between those two viewpoints will represent more of us. And I think it's important that we get God out of the narrative of government. Whether or not you believe in God is irrelevant. We're promised a government without it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, well, you look at like abortion. Look at all these issues where all of a sudden God creeps in and you're like, what the fuck? Why is God happening here? We're not even talking about this shit. Yeah, and it's it's strange, though, that you can basically attach, uh, I'll use abortion as uh, probably the main one, where it's like you can attach that onto any platform, any platform at all, and then suddenly you're getting people to agree with you. You yes. know what I mean? Where you're yes. like, I am, you're, I'm against abortion and I want to nuke all of you know all of asia and people are like yeah he's against abortion well the and real just thing like, no go ahead sorry sorry it's just like it, it's it's just mind-blowing and then i mean it's on the other side too where it's just yeah. like oh we're pro-choice and we're you know and we want to make sure that every father you know in the u.s is is murdered personally right and, well and, you know, and, and, and like, the reality oh. is that and this is this is a problem that's been growing in our country and i i was hoping that this kind of pandemic might get both sides to agree and actually come together and actually operate for us. But like neither mm -hmm. side is in it for the people anymore. And they haven't been for years. Like this is, I mean, th this, this relief check showed that to me and I don't care what mm -hmm. side of the aisle you sit on. Both sides fucking did it. The fucking house yeah. released a ref uh, a refund bill that had three articles of a green new deal that were shot down, increased to snap funding and another funding increase all within the legislation to give Americans money that they needed. Yeah. They passed that on to the Senate. The Senate's like, what the fuck is this? You guys are fucking monsters. And then they pass a bill to the house that has basically a 50 or $500 billion slush fund for corporate America and CEOs. And like the whole thing is like, yeah, how about both you guys knock that the fuck off? Yeah. And, and the reality is that this is only going to get better or only going to get worse as we go forward. Cause now, I mean, Look at, you know, again, we were talking about this. We showed the vignette. I can send you a link to it. It's really interesting. But all the stuff that big government on both sides have told us was necessary that are now just completely gone because of a pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. Plastic bags. Plastic bags are back because cloth bags are a hub for COVID. Uh, fucking the airports because nobody's flying. Now you're allowed to have a giant bottle of hand sanitizer, even though they've been telling us you can't have 3.5 ounces of liquid or it's a hazard. Yeah. These are all giant overreach problems. And the, the reality, and I think the thing that we're going to see going forward with people that were especially into uh, socializing everything is that there is no society, then all human rights issues aren't obeyed. Mm -hmm. And that's like well, the fucking it, thing. It's, it's so weird, too, because Sarge I approach said, it. said boring. From... Let's talk about simulated sports. Nah, fuck that. I don't like simulated sports. Yeah, esports, fuck that. Do they get to drop the uh, E out of it now, or are they just sports? Yeah, we're just sports now. Yeah. I, it's it's weird that they, they canceled. I think they canceled. I saw, I'm in a really, I, I'm a, I'm a level, I, I found I'm a level of nerdy that people don't even believe how nerdy I am when I tell them I'm nerdy. Um, like, I, you know, I'll tell people that I'm into Pokemon, and they're like, oh, I love Pokemon Go. I'm like, no, like, Pokemon, Pokemon. And they're like, oh, the classic like, Pokemon. I'm like, no, the new one. The new one that came out, Sword and Shield. Yeah, that's what they're called. That's what I played. Uh, and they had a Pokemon uh, tournament that they canceled uh, recently because of the health crisis. And it confused the hell out of me because I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you can play. It's a turn-based game. You can play over the Internet. Why would you? What's the point of canceling something like that? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. I can't play those tournaments anymore, man. Like, they just, they, mm -hmm. they get to me. I can't do it. 
I, uh, I, so I played Magic the Gathering. So here's the funny thing about Magic, and you'll look, you'll, you'll get to this as you get older, right? But like, mm -hmm. as you get older, being into those card games becomes creepier and creepier. Like, I'll give you an example. I went to this Magic the Gathering tournament. This is probably five years ago now. Mm -hmm. And a little background on me and, and, and Magic. Uh, if there's any cops watching, these are jokes. Me and my buddies used to do a lot of cocaine and play Magic, right? Yeah. Uh, we loved to do drugs and then and then uh, toss spells, we called it, because we were cool. Toss spells. And so my buddy, who was a professional Magic the Gathering player for a while, convinced mm -hmm. me to enter this tournament with him, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm playing this game and I beat the absolute brakes off this 10 year old kid <laughs> and the 10 year old kid starts crying and the dad's looking at me and he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? You're an adult. And I just like all, I just felt mortified and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? And like, here's the thing I didn't even tell him or that stupid little fucking kid. I was sandbagging it. I was trying to let the kid win. The kid was so bad at magic that he won even when I was trying to let him win. You gotta lean into it. You were like an anime villain or something. Like, uh, what was that, Yu-Gi-Oh? Back, yeah, back yeah, in like the day? You were, like, <laughs> you were like, I have the money for the good cards. Yeah. You can never keep up with me, kid. Well, it's just, it was like, I, I, I wouldn't even do that, man. I was, like, sad. It bummed me I, out. Here's, here's the and thing, though. Is me, you... The dad looks at me like I fucking, like, raped his wife in front of him or something. I mean, like, the, the absolute disdain is, like, the same look you <laughs> see of a family in a court with somebody that murdered their family. That's yeah. the way this guy was looking at me. Well, and I just honest, wanted to be that... like, hey, man, it's not my fault your kid sucks at this game and is a pussy. That's not on me. Yeah. Yeah, and it's honestly that dad should be thankful because if you got that kid to kit to to like quit Magic the Gathering, you saved him right. like hundreds, if not thousands of dollars over the long run. Well, but maybe he was trying to get his kid into Magic the Gathering so he didn't like fucking turn into a drug addict or something. I mean, you could set the bar a little higher than like Magic the Gathering. Try try getting him into a, like a sport or something. I don't know. Else. Have you seen modern parents these days? We don't have time for <laughs> rational solutions, man. Oh yeah. Hey, do me a favor. Guess... Can you can you tell uh, Mikey Two Belts happy birthday? It's his birthday today. Mikey Two Belts, happy birthday! Yeah, oh my God, go. how how old are you? Tell you you have to tell old Corey. Old enough to not honestly quick. answer that question. Hello. Oh. See what I did there? Yes, yes I did. <laughs> As weren't... genius. That was, I just, that was true I, genius. I just assumed I would make that joke and you would just like carry me off on your shoulders, chanting Rudy or something. <laughs> All right, well, we're coming up on time. Tell tell people where to get a hold of you. Mikey's 38 right. also, by the way, 38 today. So uh, I am on uh, Instagram. That's probably the best way to follow me, and that's lucas.ramsey, uh, L-U-K-A-S dot R-A-M-S-E-Y. Oh, okay. uh, and then I'm also on I Twitch. I put it in the chat at... for you, lucas.ramsey on, on Instagram. Yeah, and then I'm also on uh, Twitter at uh, L. Mitchell Ramsey. L. Mitchell? M-I-T. Yeah, that's my middle name. M I T C H E L L. Oh, wait, Randall. spell it again. M I T C H E L L. Ramsey. So yeah, L Mitchell Ramsey. Uh, I'm not on there a huge amount, but then I post stuff like that. I, I'm working on a website because, uh, you know, with Corona, what else? What else can you do? Yeah, man, do it and, up. Uh, yeah, when I get that done, I'm gonna start uh, posting some blog, uh, you know, blog posts. Oh, some, some of your like fiction stories and shit, man. That's super. Oh, interesting. Abs absolutely, absolutely. So you know, uh, it's not ready yet, but uh, as I get that stuff up, I'm gonna be announcing it on Twitter, announcing it on uh, Instagram. So yeah, Maybe, give me a follow if you, if you get around to it. If I get around to it, it's gonna happen. So L Mitchell Ramsey and Lucas dot Ramsey on Instagram, L Mitchell Ramsey yeah. on Twitter. Yes. There you go. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad you're doing okay. Uh, hang in there. You'll get this. You got this. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. All right. All right. Bye. You have a good night. Yeah. Bye. I will. All right. Bye. That was Lucas Ramsey. Uh, he is one of my favorite newer comics, and uh, sounds like he's doing okay. So that's uh, that's real nice, right? Isn't that a good? It's good to have like a nice, good feel-good story every now and again. You know, it's got to. Gotta feel pretty good. Should we, uh, let's see here. Let's, 
Give old, give old Johnny a call again. See what see what happens this time. Gotta get some music queued up. What up? Okay, so music clip. Yeah. I'm playing teenage suicide, as we call you. <laughs> Seems a little. You know, I'm, I, I guess it's close enough. Yeah, it's a little, little too on the head, but still kind of funny, right? Oh, dude, it's hilarious. Hold on, wait, ready? Here we go. Here we go again. So well, you're oh. the last right Have you ever seen the movie Heather? Yeah, dude, that uh, yeah. that's uh, that's the song, dude. Teenage yeah. Suicide from Heather's. Nice. Here we go. This is your new intro music on here. Don't do it. Johnny, how are you? I'm, I'm all right. I, uh, uh, I, uh, I want you to know that your segment, we're going to be calling you almost every night that I'm on air, and it's going to be Johnny Crutch's Suicide Watch. Awesome. Yeah, I thought so. That's pretty cool. How are you, uh, how are you doing? You okay? Uh, I'm all right. Uh, sure. Just... We got a we got Lord a couple shit, things like... got, got a couple things I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. Uh, the suicide stuff being part of it, but uh, uh, yeah, I just so first off, I I've been talking because I like it's so weird because I never watched that fucking Wednesday show, and that's not right an insult to you or Aaron. I just usually I'm doing comedy oh. or I'm doing something else. You got your own thing going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. also shout out to Mikey Two Melts. It's his birthday. What's up, Mikey? Happy birthday, 38, You know what man. I'm going to do to what celebrate? I turned the alert boxes back on, so have fun, guys. <laughs> you going to punish right. yourself? That's how you're going to celebrate? Damn. <laughs> Mr. Approachable goes, Corey, I can't tell if you're a good friend or a dick, lol. It's both, actually. I'm calling to weird... check in on my friend while playing Teenage Suicide. It's not like I called him up and I was like, suicide is painless. Like, I could have easily, like, had something downer, right? I could have called you and played you like. Could have just Age called and said, "Do it." He's like, "Why haven't you done it?" Hey, man, I We're thought waiting. about it. Like, like if I, if I was convinced you would take that as a joke, I would do it. Yeah, here's no. The I... thing, here's the thing about ups and downs. Sometimes people are in a down stump, funk and they don't fucking know. So, uh, Johnny, yeah. everybody's calling you Johnny F and Drunky Shoes. Yeah, Wednesday got a little lit. I've decided to step away from the booze after Wednesday. I don't think you should do that. Forward. I just think maybe don't chug an entire fucking bottle of Fireball. Well, I mean, like, I'll have... If I'm out somewhere and I'm hanging out with people, like, I might have a beer or something. But I'm done with hard liquor for a while until I get my life in order. Yeah. Just because, yeah, that was that was messy. It was really weird. Like, like, I mean, it was, like, man. Because, like, at first, it was, like, like... All right. Here's the thing. I'm not going to be like Aaron. I'm not going to make fun of you. I just... I, I really was legitimately concerned... And I don't know yeah. how to interact with that without being the prick that I am. So it's just brutally it's honest shit, you know? Uh, yeah, still. no, and I know and I know you get that. But a lot of people don't. So then they see me doing this and like, oh, you're so fucking mean. It's like, no. No. Um, obviously, like, you have a daughter. You have a ton of fans that would be very sad to see you go. Nobody wants you dead except for you, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, that, and it's also just like I have – I have multiple sclerosis, which causes depression, so I take antidepressants, but sometimes you're just in, like you said, a downward place. Like, I was just in a spiral. And then the big thing is, too, is, like, I didn't talk about this on Wednesday, but I have, uh, I have like, a, a weird, like, growth thing that's supposed to get looked at, and that whole thing got put on hold. Talk about your penis? Of this... No, no, I have a, an abnormal growth in my leg by... Uh, between my leg and my balls on the right side. It's kind of funny. It looks almost like a small labia. It's like I'm transitioning naturally. <laughs> well, you did say that, – that was the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is, like, um, are you – is one of the reasons you're so down and weird is, like, are you are you just hiding the fact that you're gay? Because you got drunk and said you were gay a bunch on Wednesday. No, I didn't say I was gay. I said I wanted to bone Leonardo DiCaprio. You also said I wanted cock a bunch. You also, there oh, was really? three points in the time where you were passed out on the desk and your head flipped up and you went, oh, yeah, I'm gay. Like, but nobody know, was yeah. saying anything. So, like, I, I didn't know if that was a conversation that didn't happen there. Um, we actually have a clip of it, of the I want cock, that somebody okay. clipped. So, 
garage. I'm I love cock. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm almost positive I'm not gay. He's I, garage. I'm I love cock. It's just you screaming. I love cock. I love cock. He's got. Wait, I did three hours on a show that was supposed to be an hour long. Oh, I don't know. I'm not. Hey, I'm not fireball. blaming you. I'm just here's the I'm thing, right? I'm not responsible for anything no, I said. No, I, I understand that, but this is the thing, right? I have right. a lot of friends that have killed themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and, and I mean, in, in a plethora of different ways, right? <laughs> uh, the one thing that most of them have in common is that the people that talk about it don't generally do it because that's a plea for help, right? And that's, yeah. and that's well, the that's thing. The like, thing. you have your I suicide hotline, you reach out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to bang on you or whatever, but I know with two of my friends that were suicidal, one of the biggest things weighing on them is that they were gay and they didn't feel like they could come out. And oh, so especially if like, problem. what? Well, I said, I definitely don't have that problem. There's like, my family wouldn't care. My, my sure. ex would be like, well, that explains a few things. And then, uh, you know, like, I'm not saying I've never looked at a dude and been like, Hey, you're kind of pretty. Well, but I mean, you I can be really... bi too. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm not like, this isn't about judging you at all. I'm just trying yeah. to see if I can't figure out something that might be at the core What's of this. Cause I mean, like you? your body shutting down from MS, I feel like is enough to make anybody suicidal if I'm honest. Yeah, it, and that hasn't been too bad lately, but that's like the other nerve-wracking thing is, you know, I have new norms all the time. Things change up and down, so I'm always trying to adapt yeah, Here's to it another one. They're, they're clipping. I mean, like, that night, there were so many, like, you being gay references. It's always yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm going to bone that son of a bitch. Whoa. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio. It's always <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm going to bone that son of a bitch. Whoa. <laughs> You're going to fuck yeah, Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio? If I get the opportunity. Yeah. I don't know. It's that night was maybe good. maybe drunk Johnny is gay. Maybe maybe if I maybe if you want me to s your d, you better put a lot of liquor in me. Suggestions yeah, or, or Jameson it's or pretty fireball. it's pretty cheap too. It's just a bottle of Fireball. A bottle of Fireball, but then I got to do the whole thing. Like Jameson will get me there quicker with okay, less. Okay, okay, but that's more expensive. So it I don't know. I guess it equals out to be the same. Either way, I'm done. Like I said, I'm. <laughs> Sandy says you have multiple personalities and one's gay and one's straight. That would explain it. Uh, that's... I, I was... The first time I was admitted, it was with some, like, psychological issues. So I, I don't know. I don't think multiple personalities is the case, but <laughs> Mikey Two Mouths just says, Drunk Johnny is DTF for anything. That's totally true. Drunk Johnny <laughs> is DTF for anything. Have you ever fucked a dude? Nope. You ever been fucked by a dude? Nope. You ever kissed a dude? Yep. Okay. You ever get yeah, a, that's all you ever given or, given or gotten a beach from a dude? No. No. Okay. I kissed a dude and I let a dude sit on my lap once when he was dressed as a lady. Ooh. That's that's all I've ever done. Well, maybe Indeed. maybe maybe this is something you should explore just for your own right. I mean, again, and I'm not like I'm not judging. I'm not saying shit. I'm just saying I know no. people. Uh, one of one of my very good friends. Uh, his, her name used to be Zach. Her name is now Maggie transition to from a a woman to a or from a guy to a woman right uh Mm -hmm. she when she was zach was the most depressed like suicidal person ever and and he was awesome but he just wasn't awesome to himself or around anybody right Mm -hmm. and then once once he transitioned to her she is one of the happiest people you'll ever meet in your life and i'm not saying transitioning or anything like that but i'm just saying maybe there's something in you that you're not being honest with, and that's causing some inner lying depression issues. I mean, I, I don't think so. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe you were just hammered. Pretty Who sure, cares, right? Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was just hammered. Like, I, I, I mean, I don't know, man. Hammered. Like, I, I love you like a brother, and it fucking like it bothers me when you're that trash talking about killing yourself, especially because like you didn't fucking well, reach like, out to me. Like, I don't get a fucking text. You're gonna text Aaron, but I don't get a text. Why did he talk about a text? With, I said you adrian and him a while ago where i'm like hey guys how you doing like and he's like were you in yeah a and i said good how then? are you and got nothing back really yes shit well i'm sorry i guess i'm an asshole well now i'm suicidal you asshole why okay here's what we're gonna yeah. do suicidal kool-aid party you and i we got this all right that sounds like a plan <laughs> but yeah i like that's and like you said though like i i was kind of on Wednesday when I was talking about it, I was already pretty much past it. I talked to my friend Sherry. That's my uh, my kind of like support system there. And I'd really gotten through everything. I just mentioned it. And then because I was drunk, I have a really hard time 
keep my mouth shut when I drink a pain. Well, like, because everybody here knows you and because I'm concerned, we're going to be calling and checking in with you daily. So you're on, okay. you're officially on suicide watch. Uh, I don't need to be, but thank you. I, I know, will. that's the thing. Because you don't need to be, it will make you even more suicidal. <laughs> we are going to drive him to it, ladies and gentlemen. When did I turn into Dr. Phil? I've always been Dr. Phil Tovar. You just never listen. Put on your mask and fucking tighten it around your neck. Uh, dude, that's how you stop so, COVID. Tovar, that's how you stop COVID with that bandana. You have to tie it around your neck. COVID schmovid, it's fucking SARS. SARS 2, bitches. Atta boy, that's what I'm fucking talking about. How hungover were dude. you on Friday? Or on oh, Thursday? I wasn't hungover at all. What? I don't... I don't get hungover. That's why, like, I was talking to Adrian about this. This is the other problem with me drinking. I do it a lot because I don't have, like, not a lot, but I mean, like, I binge drink when I go out socially sometimes because I don't get hungover. That's fucking Like, awesome. the worst thing is when I'm drunk and people have to help me. That's the that's the low point. Then I wake up and I'm good. As long as I drink water, I'm fine. You fucking asshole. That's fucking brilliant. Yep. It's really, really nice. I'm so mad at you right now, you don't even know. Why? Because I, well, I used to. I, I used to never get. I used to never get hungover, right? Right. And then I hit, uh, probably like thirty. And then every time I drank, it was the worst fucking hangover ever. And here's the thing, nope. I still drink as much as I did back then. Still. You just come with the consequences. Yeah, it's fucking garbage. Oh, dude, that's gotta be rough. Yeah. Yeah. No, I learned. I learned a long time ago that I didn't ever get hangovers, and I just kind of. I don't know. I thought maybe I would because I stopped drinking for a while when I was at, you know, home for like ten and a half years. And then I went out and started doing comedy and stuff and I just would have a few drinks here, a few drinks there. Never, ever, ever a problem except for like if I got a little too slush, people would be worried about me walking and stuff. But as long as I didn't go crazy or whatever, I was fine. And I just, yeah, I was, guess I still don't get hangovers. Yeah, Brain Dead Redhead says that's not fair. Hangovers aren't worth it anymore. No, that's exactly it. I feel like Honestly, though, for me, like, that that actually, the fact that you don't get hangovers makes me even more concerned for you. Because, I mean, I used to drink, like, a fucking Mack truck, and it was the hangovers that slowed me down. So yeah. if there's no slowing me down, I'm probably still drinking. And your body's already riddled with disease. <laughs> yeah, which is why, like I said, I think for a little while until I'm sure I've got my life a little bit more in control, I'm just going to stay away from the hard booze. Cause, uh... Just do beer and stick to fucking weed, man. Yeah, well, well, I'm done with... Oh, I'm done with weed for now just because freaking I don't know if my guy even has stuff. I don't know if I have enough money because I got pay all my other bills. I kind of took on a car payment and an insurance payment and then all of a sudden took a little bit of a pay oh, Tell me about that. So, I'm still paying off my car. Oh, yeah, dude. There's $500 oh, a month I wish I didn't pay. Oh, God. Yeah, that's more than that's way more than me, but of course you also have a way nicer car. But, uh, yeah, it's just... Oh, it's rough with all that stuff going on, and so like I don't even know if I can afford to get more herbs. So I'm just like I'm gonna hold off. Okay, but you're all I good. Everything, everything's Minnesota okay. System. Yeah, I'm good. I mean, I'm still. That's not. That doesn't sound very convincing. Okay. And also, I'm... also, can I just say like part of the reason I'm worried is also when you're like talking all that suicidal shit. Aaron decides to have a heart to heart, and that's like that's the last guy you want to have a heart to heart with you. Oh yeah. Well, and then that's the other thing, too, is, uh, like I said, the only reason I was talking about it was because I was kind of out of it. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, moving beyond it. And so uh, Aaron was just like, dude, would you get a hold of me? And it's like, I told him, no. And he's like, dude, why wouldn't you get at least get a hold of me? It's like, I don't tell people about being suicidal until after. Like, after right. it's happened and people have been like, hey, man, are you all right? You seem like you've been down. I'm like, oh, I've been having a downtime. And so... Literally, my friend Sherry and my ex were the only two people who knew about it while it was happening, how seriously I was thinking about it. And then after that, I made plans with my friend Sherry to hang out with her, and I calmed myself down, and, and uh, you know, I've been staying on my meds, and then a week or two later, I hung out with Aaron, which was last Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then that went the way that went. I mean, I'm going to be all right. It's... Everything, a majority, like Aaron said, a majority of the problems I have are, are temporary, and the other issues that are bugging me and getting on me are hopefully not severe, and I'm aware of my brain just being the way it is with my MS, so I'm started to notice a little bit more when I get depressed that it's like, dude, this is just your brain talking, you just need to calm down, so I'm sure I'll be alright, plus I already have a bunch of people keeping an eye on me, so can't go wrong. 
Well, good. I mean, that's that's important. Yeah. Also, I mean, I don't know. Like, I would probably have to get that drunk, too, if I had to deal with Aaron singing karaoke. Oh, God, dude. And banging like, what looks to be a 13-year-old. Uh, no, not 13. I think I think she's... I don't know. I, I shouldn't give out information about her on the... Yeah, know, that's fine. She feels with that. But, um, People but can yeah, go no, back and watch cool. the Wednesday thing. She seems pretty cool, but overall, like... I mean, I appreciate everyone looking out for me. I'm going to be okay. I got a lot of stuff I want to still do, and I'm spending a lot of this time. Like, I got a new app on my phone so I can speed up learning guitar. I'm working on getting a tattoo uh, design done so that way when this shit ends, I can go get that tattoo. So, well, and know, I want to get back going, to Where are you going to get really the tattoo? Fast. I'm not sure yet. I'm either going to go to... Uh, well, I know, like, the guy that owns Wingnut asked me to come down there, so I might go down there. Sure. Otherwise, I know a guy down here. Falls. When you're ready to get a tattoo, you let me know. We'll go get tattoos together. All right, yeah. The one I'm getting is, uh, I'm working on one for my daughter. It's um, uh, Rose surrounded by Ivy, because her name's Ivy Rose. And then it's going to be her birthday. It's going to be on my shoulder, so that way I see it all I'm just going to get a tattoo of a noose around my neck to commemorate you. Sweet. But that's not the way I do it. I go for pills. It's... Yeah, I know. It's to commemorate the you you thought it was. <laughs> nice. But yeah, it's... Uh, I'm going to be fine. I'm doing a lot better. Like, I mean, I had a shitty day on Wednesday, too. That was the other thing. Like, I had a whole bunch of crap go wrong right before that show Wednesday. Like, right. went out to get well, my car Well, that's kind of how it looked, and... too, because the moment the show started, you were like, bottle open, let's go. Yeah. Well, dude, literally right before we started the show, I went to get my car washed and my door wouldn't open. And I thought, oh, it's a safety feature because I'm in drive and everything. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'll lower my window. I typed in my code. I got my car washed. I get there and I get out of the car. But in order to do that, I have to lower the window because the door still doesn't fucking work from the inside. So I'm like, shit. So I've had this car for a couple of weeks. I've brought it back to the place a couple of times for an issue that it had that they dealt with. So I'm like, oh, good. I don't have to bother them anymore about fixing my car. And not even a goddamn week goes by before I'm like, hey, uh, so my door's broken. And so now I have to bring the car back again. You know the thing you fixed? It's not fixed. (laughs) Well, the thing they fixed before was the antifreeze. So they fixed that problem. Don't drink that, Johnny. Johnny, don't drink the antifreeze. I won't drink the antifreeze. Good. It smells like it smells so delicious. Though. Stop it. Stop mm. it. It's not cinnamon flavored, so I'll be all right. Not yet. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna. Not yet. I'm gonna let you go. And tomorrow, right, tomorrow we're. Che- I'm telling you, every day now we're checking in. With all you. right. That's I'll how this fine. goes. Because I know, man, but. But like you said, for me, like the fact that I was willing to talk about it means I'm no. I mean, that's it. and that's like not like I'm not trying to belittle you or or no, you know make no, light of your exactly crisis right. or anything. If, but it's it's like it's just if people are seriously considering it, the last thing they do is tell anyone. Right, and so, that and and but sometimes they're considering it and they need to talk to somebody to unconsider it. You know. Yeah. I uh, but that's the thing. Like I already did that with like I said. Like I did that with. And Sherry, I want you to so. know if you kill yourself. I will desecrate your grave. That's that'll be cool. Honestly, I, I think a lot of people should want me to do it just because of my. If you don't kill yourself, awesome. I want to get stuffed. Hey, if you don't kill yourself, I will desecrate your grave, dude. If you <laughs> if you kill yourself, I will have you taxidermied into the ugliest piece of crippled pornography you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> oh, but where are you gonna get the midget to stuff? I will just cut half of your legs off. They didn't work anyways. Yeah, that's true. Hey, guys, you want to peg a dead cripple? Come on over. No, no, it's cool. He killed himself, and we talked about that. He's fine with it. It's all good. Yeah. All right, man. Well, you keep doing your show. Yeah, I will keep doing my show. Thank you, like, like, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Tomorrow we're going to talk to you again, and it's going to be a little bit more lighthearted. Okay. But, you know, hang in there, and, and just remember... Hanging out with Aaron at night is enough to drive anybody to drink. Yeah. Well, I'm going to not do that anymore when I hang out with him. (laughs) All right. Oh, dude. And we have to get this crap done because I want to go back to Sisyphus. I have a freaking car now. Yeah, isn't that garbage? How you, like, finally got prepared to move and then it's like fucking, oh, nope, I get to stand here. Also, uh, Poog Devil Drug Christ Lord says he would watch that porn. Yeah, he would. He watches a lot of effed up shit. That's pretty great. Yeah. 
All right. Well, thank you All so right, much, man. Johnny. Have a good one. You too. I'm glad you're feeling better. And here's the thing: I'm doing if, you're, if you're if you're really gay, nobody cares. Oh, dude, I'm not gay, but thank you. All right. Cool. All right. Talk to you later, buddy. Later, man. Bye. That was Johnny Giggle Shoot. Blew it, teenage suicide. She blew it, teenage suicide. Uh, intro music. Uh, 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 yeah. What? What? No, he's got to watch Heather. What? I'm talking over. Now we can use this because it's transformative content. Oh, talk over the thing so nobody gets it. Yeah! This will really fuck up their thing. All right, that was uh, Johnny fucking Giggle Shoes, as it were. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I Like, for those of you that didn't watch it, I would say go back and watch the fucking episode of the Steel Toe Evening Show on Wednesday. Uh, it got really weird. Also, I think Aaron may or may not have given out his own number on there. That's pretty funny, so go there and harass him, I guess. I don't really give a shit. Uh, let's get caught up with the... Uh, Twitch chat, because I've been ignoring you most of this whole fucking episode. Uh, Johnny heard from Tom, blah, blah, blah. Tom jokes, Tom jokes, Tom jokes. It's Tom's birthday. It's not. It's Mikey Two Milk's birthday. Uh, birthday bits for Tom. Why can't it be both? It can. My guess is she's almost 25. Got a little Gen Z in her. Yeah, I mean, that, that could be. I don't know. I don't really guess. She just looks like she's 13. Uh, finally done picking up the sewing kit. Cool. Thanks for the update i guess sandy i don't understand that but okay uh is sandy tom no tom is tom it's t chilstrom that's tom tom and espanol a los mundios a los gracias a los muros cortitos a los next tom uh you left then he showed up he leaves you show back up the tom conspiracy yeah i mean that's fair right uh bye johnny don't watch heathers we talked about that he can watch it later johnny I'll pencil in the peg, a cripple corpse into the night. Yeah, no, that's what we're doing. We're uh, we're really freeing up his butthole for time commitments. That's pretty intense. Someone gifted me one on the Steel Tone Morning Show. That was awesome. That's cool. Five nights a week, three hours. That's true. That's what we're doing. Happy birthday again, Mikey Two Milks. Hey, how many viewers do you need to get verified? Uh, well, I'm already affiliate, right? So affiliate is 25 on average, which is right around what I do. 75 is the next goal to get partner. So got a little ways to go but you know what getting affiliate week one was pretty cool and we're gonna just keep going on and and hopefully it uh fucking keeps rocking uh johnny have out his number no aaron aaron gave his number out on that show i'm not gonna tell you where you gotta go do your own fucking busy work you fucking weirdos all right let's get this going here What? Yo. What up? How are you? What's going on, man? Not much. Tell the people who you are. I'm Ira Ford. How you doing? Good. How are you? You know, surviving these trying days. Yeah. How's uh How's not doing comedy working out for you? Uh. I Ira, it, Ira but... Ford is a local stand-up comedian. He was supposed to promote himself better, but he's just like high. So. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, I didn't, I didn't realize that. I didn't... Yeah, I said tell the people, tell the people where to find you. Where, where do people find your stuff or support you if they're trying? You know, I'm all over. I used to have a showcase, but uh, other than that, you know, around. Uh, I don't have any shows coming up because everything is canceled. Are you are you are you sticking to the quarantine? Uh, for the most part, unless I need something to eat or something. Like pussy. Nah, so it's a quarantine, dog. I'm I'm not uh, about outside juices yet. <laughs> no outside juices. Yeah. Fuck that. Have you done any of the virtual mics yet? Nah. I've been on uh, Drew's, but I didn't, like, tell any jokes. You just watched it's, it? Yeah, it's, it's uh, different. Okay. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, kudos to those that do because you ran know, out of, ran out of thought. Know. Says hi, caller, and he spelled it H I G H. <laughs> I was looking at my, my old boss, like uh, the, the vice president of the, of the, uh, the company I work for. He was like, uh, he spelled uh, uh, the new hire, like new hire. Um, <laughs> yes. H-I-G-H-E-R. I was like, what? That's a play. How are you making, Where are you working at these days? All this money? Damn. I guess it's not who you uh, want you know, right? Yeah. What are you doing for money? You okay? You still working? Uh, no, I'm not working. Uh, I'm waiting on uh, unemployment to come hook me up. Okay. But, you know. How are you uh, on money? You're, terrible. Uh, doing terrible. I'm panhandling all I can, telling people to go to Corey Adam Comedy at Venmo. I've started a five night a week, three hour radio show just to give a product back. It's not. It's not going good, Ira. You know. I mean, if you. Oh fuck. You know what, Corey Adam? What? You fuck my shit up. I was doing so good at Uncharted. Oh, you're playing Uncharted but, uh, now. Yeah, I'm playing on Uncharted Four. Okay, how's that? How's that game? Eh, you know, it's a a better version of Tomb Raider. That doesn't say because, much. Tomb Raider's fucking trash. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a better version of that. I mean, because you know, the dude. Yeah, Drake or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nathan Drake. But uh, fuck. Otsu says you I like your shit, it? guy on the phone. What happened? Somebody likes your shit. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. We're fucking. Uh, what were we talking about before? Uh, we were talking about Nathan. We're just Drake. talking about how you're surviving, man. You're just rolling on unemployment. Yeah, and I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to live uh, now in the hall with uh, an unemployment, and this uh, stimulus check that uh, is, is going to come. Uh, uh, I don't know when. I don't oh, know Otsu is saying she likes your day. shirt. That's what it is. They like your shirt. Oh, you can see me now. Well, I used um, your profile pic, so it's just you smoking with a straight out of fucks to give shirt. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I've been just uh, watching TV, uh, swaying, I mean, sitting down, swaying back and forth, uh, slowly going crazy. Yeah, I mean, I guess, do, you feel, um, do you feel craziness setting in yet? Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's been setting since, like, day two. Really? I'm not used to not doing nothing. I know, right? There's also no place yeah. to loiter and get drunk with your friends anymore. No, no open mics are open. Right. It's like uh, in all our lives, we wanted to do exactly this, and now we we have the opportunity, and I don't want it. Oh, yeah, right? Exactly. I, I was actually talking about this the other day. All I've ever wanted for my life was to sit at home and do fucking nothing. Now I hate it. Yeah, man. But I also, like, I don't know, I clawed my way up to getting to where I was a professional comic. Now, like, fucking, I have to pay and handle <laughs> on Venmo. Corey Adam Comedy, please give. Venmo. Corey Adam Comedy. Or PayPal. Oh, yeah, I mean, you can send some money my way. I don't know. Nope, I don't nope. this is about me, Ira. This is about me. <laughs> How rusty do you think you're going to be by the time we finally get to take a stage again? What happened? How rusty you do you how rusty do you think we're all gonna be by the time we get to take a stage again? Oh, very. But yeah, I mean we're all gonna think we're yeah, I mean we're crushing it. What's the number <laughs> of people you think aren't gonna come back to comedy? Oh man, I was thinking about that earlier. Because there are like some newer people that like kind of like in and out don't really give a shit. Right. They yeah, I mean they uh Fairweather uh, comics. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, 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 more than one. 
Okay. <laughs> More than one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who was going to be. What a what a great great uh, abbreviation that was. Uh, more than one. Yeah, man. Because if it's just one, then I mean, fuck. I don't know. What I mean, the like, fuck is that noise? I'm getting shot up, man. You having a drive by? No, man. And all these terrorists and shit. Fuck All yeah, right. dude. I'm, Give him hell. I'm, I'm going to pause this motherfucker. All oh, right. that's from the PlayStation? Yeah. Sounded like you were getting a text on an old Motorola Razor phone. <laughs> no, those are my them AK-47s chopping at my skin. Put on the ice cube, baby. Today's a good day. Mm -hmm. Except this nah, time man. it's to use your AK. Yeah, man. Killing my. Uh, what are you What are you doing right now? Besides this. This. This is all I'm fucking doing. This. What else am I uh, gonna okay. do? I don't have any fucking money to go out. My career doesn't exist. <laughs> the only thing I've ever done besides this was wait tables. That don't exist either. Retail is oh. not really a thing. Like everything I had to fall back on is gone. It's like Thanos snapped my careers. Yeah, man. I didn't know uh, this is going to be like a complaining thing. Not a complaining thing. You asked me, I gave you an honest answer twice, and now you're just rubbing my fucking nose in it, Ira. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry things are going so bad for you, boy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking <laughs> asshole. I'm glad things are going so bad for you. What no, a fucking jerk. No, no. No, I didn't say I'm glad. I'm just, I said I feel bad. Oh, I thought I, you said I'm, I'm glad I'm... things are going so bad for you. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Dick move, Ira. Dick move. I kind of wish I. I kind of wish I did say it now. You know what? We'll pretend you did. We'll just act like you did yeah. going forward. You got this. Fuck you. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do for We're that gonna... for that for that ignorance? I'm unmuting the alerts. Now the people can give alerts with a sound that will drown you out. How does that feel? Gee, I don't know. I don't. Right. I don't. I don't. Right. Uh, you don't fucking know what that means. <laughs> I don't really know what that means. Well, you're gonna. Find this is my out. first time on Twitch. The, is this is like a app or like a Twitch? Twitch TV, buddy. We're live streaming. We got like 30 viewers right now. Oh man. How many did we have before I came on? 60. Oh, man. That, that shit happens all the time. I'm fucking shy. Yeah. Hey, way to, way to walk people pillow. from the Twitch room, you asshole. <laughs> uh, they're the people that uh, are not going to stay around the town. That's true. Well, well, you're doing okay. Everything's good other than being bored as fuck and having to stay inside. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm super bored, man. I I'm think we all super are, man. Bored. You know, I've never wanted to go out to a bar so bad. I know. It's I weird how much know. I was like getting kind of over the bar scene and just being out at a bar, but now it's like fucking. Oh, I miss that. Now that this has been stripped away from us, I mean, I I just want to do it all now. I want to go to, to the library. No, you don't. <sighs> I mean, I really don't, but I mean, I, I want to know that I can. <laughs> I don't even want to do this stuff, but I just want to be able to know that I could should I decide to. Yes. I've never been to a library before, uh. but now I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking right. Shit, I can't even read, but I want to go to the library. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got a with it? Yeah. But I... Um... Yeah, man. This shit sucks. Yeah. Well, hang in there, uh, buddy. You got this. Yeah. When do you think, when you know, do you think I, we're all going to get to go back to comedy? Because it ain't going to be till May. I can tell you that. You're breaking up, man. Yeah, I'm breaking up with you. This call is over. I'm sick of your ignorance. <laughs> uh, what was the last question, though? 
when do you think we get to go back to work? When do you think we get to go do comedy again? Oh, man. No time soon. Right. May. No, earliest, I, right? I'm thinking, uh, yeah, at the earliest. And then people are going to still be, like, shoot to come outside. So it's going to be, like, mid-May. Well, and Lewis from Acme, Lewis Lee, was saying that, like, there's probably going to be restrictions on the seating capacity. Really? Uh, uh, Grizz Green so, 21, uh, thanks yeah. for the follow-up. Uh, Mikey, Mikey Two Milks, that's one of the guys that's uh, one of our regulars. He's kind of a channel favorite. Uh, it's his birthday today. Ah, happy birthday, Mikey Two, two Milk. He also has that exact same um, shirt. Oh, okay. All right. I'm not the only one now. Everyone likes your shirt, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, man, I, I got I, I got a bunch of other stuff I, to get to. I was just checking and making sure you're okay. Tell the people where to find you online. Where can they find your stuff if they're looking for Ira Ford comedy? Uh, Ira E. Ford on Facebook. Ira Graham 1981 on uh, Instagram. Uh, That's a great. That is a great Instagram name, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I came up with it myself. Pretty um, good. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I, that's that's where you can find me. All right. Well, thanks for doing this, Ira. Uh, we'll hit you up again, and we'll touch bases. I'm glad you're doing okay. I'm glad you're safe. All right. All thanks. right, buddy. Talk to you later. All right, peace. All right, bye. That was Ira Ford, a comic out of Minneapolis, buddy of mine. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. What else did we want to talk about? I, I had a bunch of stuff lined up. As we do, uh, you have the coolest collars. Yeah, because you just like him because he's wearing that shirt, huh? Uh, yeah. No, we do have we do have good collars. I'm trying to make sure that that is a tradition that we stick with. Uh, we got a very, very special conspiracy collar later on tonight. So tonight we'll get into the conspiracy stuff. That's going to be real good. Uh, but first, I'm going to mute these sounds. They're muted again. I also muted my mic as I burped, pro move. Uh, I got some more stuff for you uh, from Reason. We're going to do a little heavy reasoning today. Uh, this is about the coronavirus testing debacle. Uh, and this is from decades. They talked about it in that one thing, but I think it's really important for people to understand why the FDA is so bad and why I fucking hate it. So here's a Reason article on that, and we'll be right back. The delay in COVID-19 testing in the United States meant that for weeks, doctors and public health officials were flying blind about who was infected and the location of major outbreaks. As a result, they had little hope of containing the virus before it started spreading out of control. Why did the U.S. fall behind almost every other country in this regard? It's a long-standing problem that's led to needless suffering and loss of life long before the coronavirus pandemic. But in this case, its impact is so high profile and far reaching that the episode could finally bring lasting reform. Drastic measures being taken to try to contain the outbreak of a mysterious pneumonia-like virus. The genetic sequence for COVID-19 was published on January 10th by Chinese scientists and uploaded to the National Institute of Health's website, allowing laboratories around the world to create their own diagnostic tests. German scientists had one within a week and other countries in private labs quickly followed suit. The World Health Organization shipped 250,000 of the German version of the tests to labs around the world. But the U.S. Center for Disease Control decided it needed to rely on its own version of the test, which would be certified by the Food and Drug Administration. But it wasn't ready until early February. February 6th and 7th, 90 tests were shipped to state public health labs around the country. But the kits had a technical flaw and needed to be returned to the CDC for testing. Meanwhile, the virus continued spreading. On February 4, the FDA said it would allow government-approved labs with high-complexity testing capabilities to create their own tests, provided they copy the CDC's approach and send all of their results to the agency's headquarters in Atlanta for verification. Former FDA Principal Deputy Commissioner Joshua Sharfstein told The New Yorker, you certainly wouldn't want to say any lab can advertise a coronavirus test, because then it's going to be chaos. There's a lot of people who will sell things that may or may not work. Though well-intentioned, the rule became a stumbling block. 
Every virus is a little different, but this is one of the more ch most challenging ones certainly I've seen in my lifetime. Take the case of Alex Greninger, a doctor and researcher at the University of Washington who sent in his application to create a coronavirus test via email. According to a report in GQ, he then learned that he also needed to submit a paper copy, and then another version burned to a compact disc or loaded onto a drive and delivered to the FDA's Maryland headquarters. After he complied, according to a report in ProPublica, the FDA didn't approve his test right away. They asked him to make sure his test didn't cross-diagnose with SARS and MERS, other coronaviruses, which hadn't been seen in the U.S. in years. His test was finally certified on February 29th, at which point the fatal outbreak in his home state of Washington was already underway. As the crisis worsened and the testing shortage drew headlines, the FDA simplified the process. But then on March 20th, they warned that they may shut down efforts to rapidly make available at-home testing kits on the grounds that they were unvetted and could be fraudulent. The first documented cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. and South Korea were discovered around the same time. Yet as of March 17, one out of 4,300 Americans had been tested. In South Korea, it's one out of 17. Had diagnostic tests for COVID-19 been available sooner, they would have helped public health officials isolate, quarantine, and provide medical supplies to areas of the U.S. affected by the virus. How could this happen? This tragic testing delay has brought national attention to the FDA's long-standing, overly cautious approach to regulating American health care. To minimize risk, the agency has sacrificed speed, preventing doctors and patients from accessing the tools they need until it's too late. The agency's risk reduction over speed of approval goes back to the 1960s, when a sleeping pill called thalidomide marketed to pregnant women caused babies to die in utero or to be born with serious birth defects. The crisis was mostly contained to Europe because concerned FDA regulators had kept the untested drug out of the U.S. The United States has the best and the most effective food and drug law of any country in the world. In 1962, President Kennedy signed a landmark bill increasing the agency's oversight powers. It resulted in a culture of extreme caution that led to long approval times for experimental drugs and devices, keeping potentially life-saving tools out of the hands of patients. The beginning of the movement to relax those rules and rethink the trade-off between risk and speed in the FDA approval process began during the AIDS crisis of the 1980s. Gay rights activists were outraged that the FDA wouldn't quickly approve more experimental drugs like AZT, which blocks HIV's replication, or thalidomide, used to treat some of the wasting symptoms of AIDS. After lobbying and protests, including the 1988 shutdown of the FDA building, the administration slowly began to loosen its rules, leading to the approval of highly active antiretroviral therapy, or HART, in 1996. Because of HART, contracting HIV wasn't a death sentence anymore. Gay rights activism during the 1980s and 1990s created a framework for patient advocacy to people with life-threatening illnesses, leading to the Right to Try movement, which has allowed terminally ill patients to access experimental drugs and devices that are still undergoing FDA testing. The movement pushed the agency to streamline its own compassionate use program to help the same kinds of patients. But the COVID-19 testing debacle underscores the limits of those reforms. Once a full investigation comes out about the agency's failures, perhaps it will bring fundamental reform, at last giving Americans rapid access to potentially life-saving tools. All right, so that's, in a nutshell, some of what I'm talking about. Uh, Corey, what is your leading theory on who slash what the start of the virus is? I, I mean... I don't know that it was engineered. I do believe it started in China, and I do believe all the signs point to it being engineered. What's interesting is all the people that will tell you it's not engineered, the stuff they're citing is one study by four or five different outlets. Because here's here's what happened, right, Freaky Deaky? Here's the breakdown that I have. is You have China, government that's known for killing citizens whenever they need something. They... Uh, thank you, classic wowbot.com for the follow. That's a weird name. Turn the alerts back on. Um, there's a facility that was set up right next to a wet market where they were testing SARS-1. This is all factual in Wuhan. Um, and if you're the government and you're working on a new virus, you're going to put that facility as close to where an alibi is because SARS-1 came out of a wet market similar to the one in Wuhan where SARS-2 came out of. Uh, there is a doctor who came out and said that they were doing this, and then all of a sudden 
His article got to uh, suppressed. He shows back up a week later and dies. All of his assistants die. China is lying to everybody about this disease, even trying to rebrand it through the World Health Organization because there's a bunch of people at the top of the World Health Organization or the WHO that used to be in the Chinese government. Uh, China as a government entity is very, very bad historically. Uh, and, and I think that it's important for us to understand you can insult Chinese government and not be insulting Chinese people. It's one of the reasons I love Taiwan so much. You get all Chinese culture without the Chinese government. That's pretty rad. But I mean, they're misreporting the numbers. They basically had this disease rebranded because here's the thing, they had a problem with protesters. If you're trying to get people out of the street and you're not allowed to gas them anymore as you were with, let's say, I don't know, Tibet. I mean, a lot of people here in Minnesota, go to St. Paul, ask your Hmong friends who, uh, like ask their grandparents who fled what they think of the Chinese government. This is not, if this was any other government active today, except for maybe North Korea, I think it would be harder to accept this as a theory, but China has a history of not giving a fuck. So that's what I think. Uh, hey, you don't get the guy narrating the video to wish me a happy birthday. The fuck? No, I did. He just refused. I'm sorry. That's on me. My bad, bro. Bro, Hamid. Bro, Hamid Ali. King of the Brotion. I hate everyone's birthday. That's true. Uh, whatever. All right. Um, let's see here now. We're going to... What time is... Where are we at? Jesus Christ. This show has flown by, guys. I mean, this is... This is maybe the quickest one ever as far as what it feels like. I mean, we're already hitting up on two hours, which, uh, of course, means it's time to call in our local misanthrope himself. You know what? Before we do that, I'm going to do this fun little thing called exit out of Facebook. Go back into Facebook. That's the thing about Facebook that sucks for these calls is like, it's pretty weird. Like they, well. Gotta find a real good one. Oh, there we go. I got this one. I got this one. Here we go. Yup. It's hard when we bring Tovar in because I've used him so much that we're running out of pictures to come up with for him, which is kind of funny. All right, there we go. Drop a dime on Tov time? What does that even mean? Sorry birthday bits, not a happy birthday. Okay, that's, that's pretty fun, I guess. All right, let's do this and this. And this and this. There we go. Let's see if it works this time. There he is. What up? There we go. Now it's working. Oh, not much. <clears throat> Just falling down a twitch hole. Yeah, that'll happen, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, man. All this new time on my hands. It's crazy what a little bit of freaking forced boredom will do to a guy, right? I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're never bored, Corey? No. I think boredom no. is for people who lack intellectual integrity. Intellectual integrity. You have the internet. Like, I don't understand. Honestly, I don't understand bored. Like, I never have. Like, like true talk, right? Like, if you take my phone away from me and I have no access to the internet, I could get bored. Right. But right. my own curiosity and my own wanting to understand how the world works, you have the internet right there. There's no way you can be bored. It's like these people that well, bitch about, oh, I'm so isolated right now. That's weird because you're sharing every oh, fucking yeah, detail yeah. of your dumb life. Doesn't seem like you're fucking <laughs> isolated, you pricks. I mean, I guess there's moments, yeah, it's supposed to be in the house. Like, anything or whatever. Wow, that sounds like garbage. Hold on. Let me Here, let me call you back. This sounds like absolute trash. Yeah. I don't know Go. why. Hold on. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do this. We're going to take care of this right now. Yep. Yeah, right, 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 right. Hold on. Some technical difficulties, I guess. We need that one gone. And that one we hit. And I don't know if we'll get to any of these. That one's gone. And that one can go, I guess. Let's get rid of that. There we go. That should be a little easier. Okay, now... 
Sometimes if you don't clear the shit, it like lags up. Facebook's real weird on computers, man. I gotta figure out a better way to call people, but not everybody has the different apps, but everybody has fucking uh, Facebook, so it's way easier. All right, let's see if that helps. Talk more about this. Way better. Way better. <laughs> there you go. Do you, uh, up, you like those reason videos I was sharing? Which ones? Well, like I did at the beginning of the hour, they had a whole list of uh, public safety things that the FDA and uh, different government branches have now waived because of the crisis. Oh, my God. Stuff wow. that they had in place for our own safety that now doesn't really matter because it never fucking did. Dude, all this stuff that they're just waving and, like, uh, making it illegal to, like, protest against fossil fuels and, like, all this crazy stuff they're getting by right now is so maniacal. They don't even care that we know anymore. Right, they don't have to. I mean, that's that's kind of the whole thing with the internet is that they don't have to hide it. All the truth is out there. You just have to find it. And they make it a right. giant headache to find the real stuff. They're not. That's why I always laugh at people that think there's like a skull and crossbones. There's there's nothing like that. <laughs> they don't have to hide. They can do it right out in maybe, the Maybe, but not anymore. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but... Well, like back said, in the day, I mean, like, like that, yeah, yeah. You, had, you had a collective of aristocrats that were together for sure. But right. that hasn't... I mean, we're talking... That's probably a hundred years away at this point. Well, and even with the internet, we're not inside of the billionaire's meetings. Like, Thanks to uh, news, news of the weird for following. I really appreciate it. Well, what's, your, what's your tip for tonight, Tobar? So, uh, I was uh, actually thinking uh, the other day about how to actually get delivery food safely because I know it's been a big, uh, uh, I haven't been for ordering food before. And I was like, God, like, if I really wanted a pie, how the fuck can get a pie to this house? And I think I figured it out. Uh, a pizza pie. Anyway, I wanted to share this with you guys. So, uh, if I was going to, like, order food, right, and I wanted to get something for, like, a uh, pizza blue chip, which is the shop that's close by me. Yeah, hold on. Um, what the I, fuck? Hold on. You sound like a robot, man. Uh, I'm talking like a normal person. How? Okay, wait a minute. Are you... Are not you on under... speakerphone. I'm on no, 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 speakerphone. No, I know. It's iPhone. just roboting out, and it's not like I reset it. And it wasn't. It's not on my end. Hang on. Let me uh, let me check the faster network. Give me one second, okay? Yeah, go for it. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Come on. Sounds better now. I got a lot. Yeah, I've had some problems with uh, some of my server stuff recently. So yeah, it sounded it sounded like trash you know, on uh, one I'm of your things to a today network too. Right now. Okay. I should be on a faster network. Let's try that. All right. How about now? I, Can you hear me now? Yeah, that sounds way better. Yeah, okay, cool. It's yeah, a bit I just of an uh, echo, but it's way better. Yeah, than I mean, I'm I'm streaming like two different Twitch channels and talking to you at the same time and then like well that's, that's on... what it is stop streaming those yeah, Twitch yeah. channels no I got fast enough internet I just switched to a different clearly channel clearly you do not do you sounded like a robot yeah but that was just on that one network man I got four here maybe I switched to a... I, got, I got a deeper pool yeah. that's all so anyway pizza somebody man. said can one of your apocalypse things be on how to get a good phone connection <laughs> pay your charter bill I guess Fly Dog says, prove you're not right. a bot. Prove I'm not a bot. Bot, I'm not a prove. Prove Devil Drug Christ Lord says, is Tom Tovar? I am definitely Tom Tovar. We've all been Tom Tovar. I feel like I got Tom man. Tovar by this. Yeah, you sound way better now, man. Real, real props on that. Poor Tom. Yeah, I, it's just uh, I didn't realize how much traffic was on the other servers, so I just switched to something quite different. So that's all right. I can problem solve. So, uh, what's Speaking your, of problem oh, solving, what's picture. your fucking tip? This, what's your tip? Okay, so I want to talk about ordering, uh, ordering food in, right? So, like, I was, I was brainstorming the other day if I like, if I wanted to order a pizza, how the hell would I do it? And I, I got it, right? So, first of all, um, I don't think that people should be ordering any cold foods at all, like salad, any kind of cold pasta at all. I think that should be off the table completely. But like, say I wanted a pizza from like Pizza Luce, I could like call. I could order pizza, I could get it at my door, pay them uh, digitally, uh, pick it up at the door with gloves or whatever, bring it in the house, take it out of the box, 
put it in my oven that has been preheated at 425 degrees, let it sit there for like five, six minutes, pull it back out, and I would be, I would feel safe eating that. And that's probably safe for like any hot food. Like say I wanted to order some mustacholi or some like uh, some wings or something. I could just take anything I wanted and like uh, throw it in the oven for like five, six, seven minutes and kill like anything that I might be worried about and then feel safe eating it. Why not cold though? Because, I mean, are you going to throw a salad in the, in the oven for seven minutes to feel safe eating it? No. But, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> throw it in the fridge for, like, two I just, hours. Maybe two hours, but, like, I don't think putting it in the fridge for two hours is going to kill the disease. It might. Uh, it'll make, it, it'll make it taste better. <laughs> it'll make COVID taste better. Yeah. That's what I should be talking COVID. about. Are you saying SARS-2 wrong? SARS-2 taste better. COVID is just so it's ta- it's so catchy. It's like right. uh, that's why they like, rebranded it. It's important yeah, to even and now and now I don't know if you've noticed this, but we were ahead on that curve. Most news sites are now calling SARS, it COVID, COVID SARS, two. yeah, SARS two COVID because they're like because yeah. coronavirus is what they all were. This was a rebranding by the Chinese government that blew up in their face. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool what you're seeing all these like anti like uh, these reporters versus like these these small reporters like you're seeing that, like a rise of journalists that are like anti big uh, big money journalism you know and uh, I think a lot of people are turning to that to to get a lot of their news you know via YouTube or via like different sources. Whoa! Yeah, Rusty Grammer said shit. I've been stuck on the phone for over an hour being tech support. If I cheer 300 or 369, what do you, 369, can we discuss the strange correlation of COVID and the emergence of 5G technology? Kind of a scary thought, especially if they want to enforce mandatory stay at home. No, that's a, yeah, all right. And and then he immediately cheered it because we're talking about, yeah, no, that's a really interesting point that I never thought of is that 5G was being held and everybody was dragging their feet and now, all of a sudden, because we're all staying at home, 5G is being rolled out. You know what I? It what reminds I think me of. You know is? what it reminds me of? Yeah. It reminds me of that Bill Hicks video or the the routine of like America's in control. Here's more American gladiators. Go back to sleep, America. Your government <laughs> is in control. <laughs> you know what I think this has to do with? Hmm. Uh, I think that they realize that there's going to be a lot more internet traffic that maybe some of these uh, uh, internet providers aren't going to necessarily be able to handle on them on the, on their own. And so they're trying to give people more options to get online. Yeah, I would say that's probably fair. Yeah. It's probably some of them I mean, for sure. There's also probably something nefarious in there for sure. I mean, I, I, I had a friend the other day that sent me like 25 news articles on the dangers of 5G. And I was like, that's a lot to go through. And he was just like, oh, my friend sent them to me. You got to go through all these. And I was like, yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure it's not good for you. <laughs> For sure, it's not I good still, for you. I mean, I still think that 5G has been available for the ultra rich for a while now. Yeah, yeah, for, uh, probably. Like almost everything's been available as long as you have a price point. I mean, look at look at fucking Magic Johnson. HIV isn't even really affecting him. That's what money can do. Well, I bet most of the towers that they put up for the last five years, all you really would have to do is flip a switch, and like all of a sudden the tower's putting out 5G. You know, it's not like it's not even really a hardware thing. Like it's been being installed for like the last couple of years. Like every time they put up a new tower, have to work on a tower or whatever, and then like all, all this going to be is like a command function they put in. Yeah, that's probably fair. I mean, yeah. like it's it's probably already it's probably already around us, ready to go. It's it's just a matter of turning it on. That's all. I mean, and if they're getting if they're doing this much work to push that kind of legislation through, then yeah, like I don't think that's long. I I think um, before we're out of this, you see like worldwide or at least all across the U.S. implemented five G. Just hope you're not next to one of those towers, I guess, dude. Right. I mean, if you're if you're next to one of those towers, you are fucking host. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I kind of think is weird is like think about all the all the farms and stuff that have like towers uh, next to livestock and shit. And you're just eating all that. Well, and think about how many like like legislation things they had to go to to put it there because they don't give a fuck. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well. We got we got one more guest to get to. So your tip is uh, no cold food, only hot food. Well, no cold food. But before I was uh, I was like totally like don't order food. I think it's a dumb idea. You can't really control it. You don't know if anything's going to be contaminated from a cook. But like I was, I, you know, you just start jonesing after a couple but weeks. That's, but not that's like food. like I, I was talking to you about that though. Like the yes. delivery aspect of it is not really a thing. 
because we know that this virus doesn't live on paper anywhere near as long as it lives on every other substance. Yeah, I mean, like what's really interesting like to notice is that, well, but what's really interesting to plastic. notice is like, if you order a pizza, uh, yeah. a lot of stuff that used to come in metal is now coming in paper bags. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing is that if you like, if you order a pizza, right, let's say, let's say somebody's infected, right? They cough on your pizza. Okay. Yes. That goes into a cardboard box, which is now sitting at a very hot temperature for about 45 to 50 minutes. Medically, that is dead. Like yes. there's nothing on there. It, it, and here's another thing that you can do too: reheat it. This, this virus does not no, survive extreme heat. That's what I was talking about. So, like, if I were to bring any any hot food, like I could order any hot food. Like, if I wanted Chinese food, I could order it and feel safe eating it, where I couldn't before I thought of this. Whereas it's just simple: just take it out of the containers, put it on your own plate, uh, or put it in something that you can put in the oven. Put it in the oven for five or six minutes, pull it out, and now it's safe to eat, and you shouldn't have to worry about you know it being contaminated at all. Whoa, Rusty yeah. Grammer just. Uh... Jumped into some 5G conspiracy, but we got our conspiracy guy on the way. Uh, Tovar, I'm gonna cut <laughs> you loose. Uh, good job yeah, on your uh, your friends meeting th thing today. Yeah, it's fun. It was a little wild. Uh, I still don't know what it is yet, but whatever. It's just a place to hang out for now. Yeah, I mean that's important too. Uh, tell yeah. the people where to get a hold of you. Hey man, uh, you can find me on here, Tovarius underscore seventy nine. I'm on uh, Instagram, uh, Stephen Tovar seventy nine, and on uh, Facebook, Stephen Tovar. All right. Well, that is Tovar. This has been Tovar's Tips. Uh, Thanks, thank you bro. so much, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Have fun. Yeah. All right, bye. All right, that was Tovar. We got one more guest in store for you yet tonight, and it's going to be a good one. So I'm going to actually hammer through. Let me just text him real quick and make sure he's okay with that. Uh, hold on one sec. And then Rusty, we'll talk about your, we'll talk about your 5G stuff because uh, the guy I'm bringing on knows it. Oh yeah, 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 you're right there. I didn't realize you were right there. Calm down, Jesus Christ, dude. With your fucking Joe Exotic memes or whatever. Uh, all right, we're just gonna we're gonna plow through these stories real fucking quick. Um, yeah, let's let's fucking let's fucking do that, shall we? Uh, let's see here watering hole that's been in business since before city, city, really city watering hole that's been in business since before world war ii where butt heavy is still cool and pride is king quiet comfortable living room kind of bar where people just kind of go to get away from their life and 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 be comfortable somewhere where they don't have to kind of deal with stuff but wednesday they did have to deal with some stuff for only the second time in 83 yeah. years that anyone knows of look up over the door and there's some guy there with an awfully big gun someone tried to rob the place that was the sketchy thing to me him being so erratic the lone gunman waved what police say was a heavily modified pistol around the room ordering people smoking. on the ground and demanding their money and phones but when he came to one of the regulars, something unusual happened. He was a wild card that the guy wasn't expecting. Not another punk trying to pull a punk move. Tony Tovar refused to comply. Yeah, I'm so tired Tovar. of people in South City think that they can control people because they want to muscle their way in with firearms or bad attitudes or, you know, some kind of aggression. People who were there say after that, the robber settled for the cash drawer and left. No one was hurt. And just about everyone but Tony thinks he's a big reason why. A lot of us want to be like that. A lot of people want to stand up to somebody like so this that. this dude just kept smoking his cigarette. That guy is badass as fuck. Yeah, it's pretty good, right? I love that shit. Um, this one's kind of funny, too. This is a failed demolition. In Dallas, In the Dallas. demolition came early Sunday. All eyes on the 11-story building packed with 300 pounds of dynamite. But as the dust settled, an elevator shaft rising from the rubble. It's a stubborn building for sure. It lost its momentum and it settled back down. It's not going anywhere right now. The tilted tower, surprisingly similar to the most famous leaning architecture of all. Well, leaning tower of Pisa, of course, right? And that's how the leaning tower of Dallas was born. Everyone snapping and sharing their moment with a piece of history. We thought we had to come out here and catch it and, you know, kind of help it, help it back up a little bit. But don't expect this attraction to stick around. It's already become famous. Any chance it stays? Uh, no chance it stays. It's coming down. <laughs> With a wrecking ball on the way to do what dynamite couldn't. I would say that all things have to come down for new stuff to grow. For now, the tower offers anyone an Italian vacation 
with a Texas twist. Morgan Chesky, NBC News. That Texas Dallas. twist is actually COVID. How fucked up is that? Did a plane hit it? Yeah, it looks like a plane hit it, right? So everyone's wearing a mask, and this guy's like, hey, I'm going to rob a bar. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happened. And then, of course, this guy. This is a truck full of toilet paper that caught fire. And boom, went the dynamite. And then we also have uh, Zoom iOS app is sending data to Facebook, even if you don't have a Facebook account. Uh, a lot of people are using Zoom. I know Joey's here, and we'll talk to that, but... Uh, yeah, Zoom is garbage, and it reports on you a whole bunch. So if you're using Zoom, just be aware of that, because when I found out about that, I was super fucking pissed. All right, here we go. Our final caller of the evening. This is going to be great. Uh, we picked the best time. So here we go. Boom. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. There you go. What? Hold on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Take your time. I'll say something. Hi, I'm saying something. Oh, sweet. That's you. Yeah. What's up? Well, I don't know if it's sweet that it's me, but it's me. Uh, tell the people who you are. My name's Joey Vincent, and uh, I saw this coming. Yeah, yeah, you did. And uh, tell them where they can get a hold of you. Uh, filterfreeamerica.com filterfreeamerica america misspelled with a k intentionally dot com that's my podcast and that's a good way to contact me awesome or actually so, i'm at home right now that's where i'm actually at home. so we have uh a, a guy rusty grammar who's a friend of the show he wanted to talk some hardcore conspiracy theory stuff and then everybody else said yeah conspiracy theory because i'm kind of known as the conspiracy wacko and then i thought right. well who better to get on but a bigger conspiracy wacko that's right. Uh, so the big one right now that we're talking about, and Rusty Grammar donated bits. Uh, thank you for donating bits. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, you can also go to Corey Adam Comedy at Venmo. Donate there. I don't have a job anymore. Here we are. Uh, Rusty Grammar was putting in here, Joey, and I wanted you to get a load of this. I don't know if you got a chance to read it, but 5G is at a microwave frequency. It can penetrate skin, open up pores, and allow viruses an easier entryway. Or alternatively, the frequency can be used to cause pneumonia-like symptoms to begin with. It's been proven by scientists who told uh, by the Gates Foundation to shut it down. So are you familiar with any of these, like, leveled things on 5G? I'm starting to start reading that. I've honestly not gotten too deep in it because, I mean, there's there's so much to to dabble in. But uh, what I've been reading, you know, lately is yeah, there's absolute science that backs up the, the, the risk involved, so much so that they even put up warning signs where these things are at, saying you've got to stay without of, without of this range here because it could you know, cause physical damage. Right. And there's all kinds of videos of people claiming to be experts and, and, and whatever, you know, warning of it, and they're all kind of warning the same thing. You know, I, I'm not ready to pick a side on it yet, but it's definitely something that that's, seems plausible. What do I know? Well, it's weird how that shit starts rolling out, and then we have the world's biggest pneumonia, right? I, I don't, I don't know. I, maybe I haven't read anything or watched anything or been told anything that that can link the two together, as in well, the that fact that the fact pneumonia. that it causes pneumonia-like symptoms. It's been rolled out for half a year, exactly when the start date of all this is is kind of interesting, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's it's. The virus is appearing in places where those things aren't established yet, too. So, sure. I don't know. I, 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 with me, you know how it is. Everything's on the table until it's proved otherwise. But what would you say? What would you it. say is the craziest conspiracy theory that you believe in? Like, what I know because you and I both talk a lot of conspiracy. And if you if you like conspiracy talk, America, uh, Filter Free America is great. It's America with a K. It's a great podcast that Joey's been doing for what ten years now. Uh, yeah, get or nine years. Off and on. Really good to get your uh, your fix on if you need some conspiracy stuff. But I know both you and I subscribe to some really wackadoo shit. What's what's in your opinion the craziest fucking conspiracy that you think's real? Well, uh, again, everything's still on the table with me on that one. But I will give you something that's kind of on the, along that lines. And um, 
it's <laughs> I just just posted about it tonight. It's the uh, the conspiracy surrounding both the coronavirus and uh, the game, the division. Remember the division? Yeah. The video game. Yeah, the video game. Yeah, yeah it sounds like it's right yeah. out of there. It's 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 almost exactly the script outside of the uh, the the person who spread the virus was was a terrorist. But anybody who's played the game, you know the backstory is terrorists, New York City. They they contaminated money with the flu, this this killer flu, and then it got spread around around Christmas time and half of New York died and they had to lock the city up. Yeah, it's 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 crazy similarities that that, that coincide in there. But I don't know. Of of all the ones that I mean outside of it just being a natural flu possibility, it 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 seems awful convenient. I mean with things going on in international affairs, what with trade wars and 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 fighting over who's going to have the new petrodollar, who's going to control the the oil economy uh, with their currency and and so forth. It it, it to, to me in my world and my world view it seems completely possible that this is the next step in warfare. I mean, we're well, all doing... Well, here's, here, are you ready for this? Yeah. 5G was rolled out for the first time in Wuhan City on October 16th, 2019. Wow. I didn't know that. I don't know. Again, you if to, to be a fair conspiratorial-minded person, you have to, you know, allow for, for coincidences and things to happen. Until you have, you know, I mean, I don't know, man. At some point, it just becomes so coincidental that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and that's true. That's very similar to 9-11. There's so many conspiracies piling up. It, it you know, kind of seems implausible that it wouldn't be. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I holy say, shit. I, I just, so I just actually Googled, because one of the people in the chat said that about that 5G. Uh-huh. Absolutely confirmed. Okay. That's them saying that or them quoting a source saying that? No, no, that's me. I just Googled it. Oh. CNN, it. CNN ran a story in November 1st about how Wuhan was the first city to unroll it in October. Oh, that, okay, that part's confirmed. I thought you made the connection to that. That's, that's crazy, Rusty. I didn't even fucking know that. That's uh, that's pretty unsettling. But the I know the whole argument for that, the dangers of that stuff have been going on since back when they started doing like water meters that were these digital water meters that they could read via the internet. Okay. I mean, they were having health issues with just that. And it's a similar technology as far as, and it was a, a radiation component <laughs> emanating off the, these new digital water here or water meters they were putting in people's homes. So, I mean, it, it all seems like a plausible thing. I mean, everybody knows. Yeah. That. I mean, just same thing like growing a tumor in your head for having your phone next to your head too long. You know, it's the same kind of thing. Sure. Where do you, so, where are you at with how this originated? Because I absolutely think it was engineered by the Chinese government. Um, I don't know, man. Again, everything's still on the table. It could totally be what how it's being presented as. But again, like I was just saying, man, it's it's not. You mean out of China? My China could have actually it. not been lying because that historically is not the case. Well, yeah, but they don't have to lie about everything. I mean, it it could be, it couldn't be. I, I it's. It, Consider everything, but it does. I mean, in my worldview, it seems like something plausible. It seems like we're at that point in history when it when it comes to you know conflict and, and how we resolve them that we take it to this level. You know, something this extreme. Ran out of been, thoughts. Just, just said the military has been developing it for years. Uh, active yeah. denial system, it's called. Yeah. Or V. Are you talking about the reading? Oh, okay. Smart meters are causing health issues in California too. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. Right. But I, don't, I, just, I just don't, the part that kind of loses me is, I mean, these are going up in Washington, D.C. These are going up everywhere. Mm-hmm. So how are the, you know, the powers to be, if, if, if they're, if this is an intentional thing or a thing that they would know about, and they would know about it if it was, how are they protecting themselves from it? You know? Well, maybe they don't know about it. Maybe it's classified information. I mean, maybe the president and the vice president have that information, but I mean, they're like, if you think the politicians are in control, you haven't paid attention to our military ever. Right. And I mean, there's like, there, I'll tell you how they don't know. There is a security clearance code that most congressmen and women do not have. Like your president yeah. gets it. I don't know what your vice president gets, but your president gets to see everything, but that's it. But you would have to think that somebody who is involved in something of that scale and that and that kind of not really because if you think think about it if they just bury it under a fucking if they hand somebody a seventeen thousand page 
dossier and they bury it in the middle, they're not going to read that shit. Well, what you need to do is find somebody in the United States that's... that's Especially Trump. That I know, I'm not convinced Trump can read a book of 200 pages. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I'm just saying, um, like, it's it's weird when people to me, it's weird when people like you tell me, oh, this massive undertaking, like, it doesn't have to be, though. It, like, in the reality of it, when you're talking about military actions, there's only four or five people at the top. And that's not no, a no. big number. <laughs> that's why you gotta let me finish. Uh, that's what I was saying. I was saying that who, if there was somebody involved, if it was a nefarious man-created thing, you would have to think that one of those people who were involved in creating it is living within the country that's surrounded by these new 5G towers. So my question is, is if, if that if they know that's a thing that can hurt them and kill them, you know, why would they be putting that in the place where they live or allowing that to happen? That's the part. That's what. Well, but I mean, if you know people. about it, maybe you tell your kids, "Fuck you! You're getting a 3G cricket phone." Yeah. Could you know, be. and also, and also, like, it's not like they're allowed to talk about that. That's what security clearances are. Yeah, but how do you live your life though? If you have to drive out of that, and if you walk out your door, you're in an environment that's that's how everybody by does. That's how is. like look at Snowden. How many people are like Snowden that know way more like that that just shut the fuck up and do it because that's what they're told to do? Right. Well, that's all part of the compartmentalized type system of the government. Right. Well, that's exactly it. It's all just a giant body, and so the left hand has no idea what the right hand. So it's like it's the movie Cube. Have you ever seen the movie Cube? No. So in the movie Cube, it's like this giant death trap, and they like they made three movies, and the third movie is called Cube Zero, which explains how it was built. Which is it's trash, like it's not a good movie, but the story is interesting because the idea is that you have this giant death trap, but you have it fucking so spread out between independent contractors that nobody really knows what they're working on. The guy working on like the axe blades just knows he's working on axe blades. The guy working okay. on the cube moving around only knows he's working on the rooms moving around. And that's exactly how you would do it. Like, they're not sharing the information that they know. Right. Well, if, if yeah, I've never been in the military, but if you read enough Tom Clancy books, he's pretty accurate in his description. I've never been to the military, but I have read a lot of Clancy novels, so it's just <laughs> like I've been in the military. Just Thank like, you well, for it, your it, service. Pick up a Clancy <laughs> novel, goddammit. Well, that's why it's so popular within people in the military because he's very accurate, or was very accurate in his writing. But that's when they when they talk about when the military operations that they do, you know, everything is compartmentalized where you can only you only need to you know what you need to know type thing. If you're in charge of filling up the airplanes, you don't need to know where the airplanes are going. You just put the gas Correct. in the airplane. Right. Well, and that's exactly it. That's how you keep secrets. Like that's like because it's not that you're keeping a secret; it's that nobody is in the know. Right. Like the people that are constructing the 5G towers have no idea what they're doing. You know, it's it's like the fucking it's like all that fucking weather cloud shit around 9/11. Like have you seen that shit? The weather cloud thing? Yeah, like the hurricane that was off the shore of New York the day of 9/11 that didn't get reported, but there's record of it in the like weather logs and shit. Oh wow, you're surprising me with some 911. No, I don't oh, know. Oh, dude, I can that. I can tell you. I I watched. I will send you this link. I watched this conspiracy theory thing on 911 that just changed my mind about a bunch of it. None of it being the government being involved in it, but just how it was executed. Right. Because like the thing that this video breaks down is some footage of the planes and then talks about hologram technology, controlled demolition, and hologram technology would leave everybody on the ground thinking that they saw a plane crash into a building. So you have a hundred eyewitnesses and nobody's going to call them a liar, even though what they're seeing didn't actually happen. And the way that you would need to do that is you would have to have a giant transport somewhere. And there's literally a hurricane reported by all the weather syndicates within the mile radius of what you would need an aircraft carrier to do. Yeah, we would, we would have to spend some time. I'm familiar with the hologram angle of that. Yep. And that, that's pretty sketchy from what I've, what I've seen. I, I, I try to focus on the scientific aspects of it and things that can be. Holograms are scientific, yeah. Joey. They they exist. Well, I mean, the science of the collapses and the, the the physics behind it. That's you know where I I try to steer people to. But yeah, yeah I've, but I've the I've physics are fucked up too. Like everybody that wants to quote, oh, steel beams don't burn at that temperature if they're this grade. Like yeah, but fucking New York is one of the most corrupt cities on the planet. Show me one contractor that's building shit with the beams they're getting paid for. Uh, oh, well, you bought, the, you bought military-grade steel? You're going to get this steel, and we're going to charge you extra. And now there's drywall over it, so you'll never know. Right. Because you know well, what absolutely just... does burn at jet fuel temperature? The next grade of steel down. 
Well, yeah, it's not about it, it, a continual heat source at that thing will will weaken. So, I mean, there's a lot of correctness to the people who oppose. I mean, it's just, you got to look at it the right way. But I, I don't think that you're, you're. It's a stretch thinking that the, uh, or I think it is a stretch that the you know they replace the building materials. That was a pretty big Rusty, project. Rusty Rusty Grammar said the military industrial complex is a massive ass rabbit hole. I'm sitting here wondering who can I trust? Nobody. Google is a massive player in the end of game NWO. It's up to the few of us awake, not woke in parentheses, people to call it out, <laughs> stay vigilant and inform others and let them choose their own final destination. Can confirm, Plus, Corey, I've made weapon components for an ATK and they test out by Elk River and were accurate as hell. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. Well, that's the rub of the whole thing. I mean, we're... The technology Project that Blue we have. Beams, guys? Cool. Yeah, Project Blue Beams, that's what it's called. Thank you. I forgot the name of it. Yeah. I mean, and cloud you, seeding you is very real. To have access to technology that's going to allow us, you know, to find information they don't want us to have or are not aware that we have. Well, so, I, mean, I mean, they don't even have to. It's Brave New World. They don't even have to hide it. They just they just put so much information over the top of it. I mean, look at all the quote unquote fake news right now. It's so hard to find accurate information on anything you're looking for, and that is by design. Right. Because the whole thing is they don't want it, like, that. that's the big thing to me is I don't believe in that skull and crossbones shit like you do, or at least you used to. I don't know what you believe anymore, but, like, the whole thing is, like, you don't need any of that. You just need a bunch of fucking noise over the top, and nobody nobody hears the truth anyways. It doesn't matter if you put it out there for everybody to find. It doesn't mean they're going to be able to find it. That's true, but, I mean, there's also, you got to understand that they want disinformation out there. And they want confusion out there, and they want different groups believing different things because that's that's part of the insulation. That's how you insulate. Well, yeah, that's corruption. how you control people too. Yeah. It's not unheard of. I mean, no. that's it just it makes sense if you're controlling a population, even if it's for non-nefarious reasons. If you just want to maintain a stable society, you're you're going to want to work, do some social engineering. You're going to want to do that. I mean, eventually a population gets so big that that's the the default. You know, you got to steer everybody in the right direction. Keep everybody, Keep all the rats on their will. Keep them fucking generating income. Right. Well, but you can't you can't have them generating income if they're just at home cashing a check, right? Right. I don't know. So what does that mean? And what does that what does that mean is happening? Right. If if the, the majority of this, what is it now? Are we at eight million yet unemployed? I'm one of them. Is there? I mean, uh, I would think. I don't. I don't know what the numbers are, but I mean, it was like what thirty million day one. It was six point five a couple days ago, so it's probably going up pretty fast. But that's so. That's the question now. If this is man-made, intentionally man-made, with some kind of motivation, what is that motivation? Where, well, I mean, where, the motivation is martial law. Yeah, but that but that's a tool to 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 get from point A to point B. Martial law. Yeah. What is point B? Where do point you want to go? Point from B here? is re-electing and keeping all of the top-end Republicans in power. Because Republicans yeah. generally endorse military spending, and the real people that are in control are the military, because politics is basically a puppet show for the people. I, I think it's wrong to uh, to assume that it's a one party thing. Well, it is um, when you look at military yeah. spending. Like the Republicans yeah, have legislated more military spending than the Democrats historically. So if you're the military, you want them in mm. power because it doesn't matter either way, but you're going to get a paycheck. Well, that's not that's not completely accurate. You need to look at who signs those military spending bills. Those look at look at the NDAA bills under Obama under his administration. Right, the NDAA, which is an ex, which is an extension of the NDA, which was a Republican bill. Right. Almost everything but, Obama did was an extension of a Republican bill when it comes to military spending. I'm not saying Obama's good. He's not. I have my own problems with Obama. But I'm saying that if you look in the last 40 to 50 years, the Republicans have been legislating way more military spending than the Dems. That's right. a fact. But you, they, can, you can find that. But it still has to be a majority to vote on it, and you got to look at the voting records of the parties, both of the parties. I mean, even fucking um, uh, Bernie Sanders. I mean, he was he was big in funding the the F thirty five project. That was one of his pet projects. You right, know, but it didn't go to fruition. I'm talking about shit that goes. Uh, the F thirty five one. That's I didn't think it did. I thought that was the one that got voted down. No. Okay. It was a thing. I believe I believe you because I know you. Or if I'm missing a number somewhere, but it's a, it's a it's an active jet platform now. So it's all jet fuel, right? Hello? Did we lose him? 
think we might have lost him. Joe, are you there still? Huh? Well, that was Joey Vincent for a second. Uh, hold on, let's see if we can get him back here real quick. Let's see what happens. They're on to us, man. Yeah, right? God, I get it. You don't like when people have different viewpoints, you authoritarian fuck. Jesus. Yeah, um, that was a really weird weird time to get cut out. They're like, oh, shit, put on the surveillance recording. Let's do it. <laughs> They're about to say the right thing. They're about to stumble onto it. Shut them up. Um, yeah, but so if, if, if this is, if the 5G thing is a, a man-created thing and they want these results, these are, are intentional results that they're getting, uh, why? What's the end game? Besides martial law, martial law. More, more power. Yeah. Like, how is martial yeah. law not the end game? Well, where does it go from there, though? I mean, we'll, you well, know, then play you it stoke, out. Then you stoke the flames and you go to war with China. Do they need to do this to have go to war with China? I mean, that seems extreme. Yes, it seems like they need to have what looks like another Great Depression to justify another war on the magnitude of World War III to like balance our budget. They absolutely need that. That's what America does. When we need to balance our budget, we start a war. That's what we do. All right. So to, to do that, though, we're eventually going to hear somebody within our government is going to say, hey, guess what we discovered? Uh, the Chinese did this. It was intentional. Yeah, don't that... don't yeah, don't don't sleep on that and don't sleep on them coding it with weapons of mass destruction. Right. Well, that's what this would be classified as, I mean, biological ma weapon of mass destruction. I don't know. I, again, all everything's on the table. I mean, I, I am going to lie. I had a twinge yesterday. Uh, I was reading a story when they were talking about uh, medical supplies being donated by China, China getting rejected because of quality and contamination. I thought, you know, it's, some of that stuff is, you know, you always think that whenever whenever something like this happens or they do something or want somebody to believe something, they're going to start, you know, putting little drips of information out into the media stream yep. to kind of get your brain thinking that. So when it finally does come out, your brain has half made the decision to agree with it already. Yep. So it's all plausible. Yeah. As I say, this is new ground, man. This is new ground on so many different fronts. Even as somebody like me who, who will entertain the, the, the wackiest of conspiracy theories for one reason or another. Well, the I thing mean, about the wacky ones, though, is that most of the time the wackiest conspiracy theories have this little hinge of truth deep down inside of them. That's what, yeah, that's what makes a, uh, conspiracies attractive, even the, even the wrong ones. Yeah. They can sound really good if you word them the right way. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. Of, of my whole spectrum of things to worry about and, and that I've been preparing for and prepping for for years, this was the most terrifying to me. Anything biological, this is such Well, I think anything that's just like a hidden pathogen in the air, like anything yeah. that's an invisible thing. Because that's the thing. I'm not, yeah. I'm not scared of the virus itself. I'm not. I'm scared mm -hmm. of the political tool and the way people will behave in response to it. Because the whole thing, and, and you know, I am, I am a very, very huge libertarian guy, is once they take away these liberties, we will never get them back. And even, even Governor Walls here, he did a fucking yeah. press conference where he basically admitted they were surveilling us to find out if we we're sticking to staying at home. Right. Like, did you see that in his fucking speech? Yeah. Well, they, yeah, they're already tracking the phones. So that's that's right. how they know they could they could tell where the phones were at. So that, that's and now and you know, now studies are coming out that says the distance you should keep is closer to twenty four feet. Jesus Christ, I didn't know that. <sighs> yeah, man. I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, if anybody is holding out any hopes that the society that we ret return to, whenever this is over with, is going to be like what it was in nineteen or, or two thousand nineteen. Uh, you can just put that to rest. No, it'll be way earlier. It'll be closer to something, say, oh, I don't know, in 1984. Right, that's a yeah, good choice of year. Um, it, it's going to be a different world. And it's going to be an And that's even if this is a completely natural, normal thing. There's nobody involved other than Mother Nature. Things are going to be put in place, things that they were looking for excuses to, to invoke or to change or to implement. A lot of those things are going to be there. Well, they it's already the have. I mean, we, we shared a vignette <laughs> earlier on this thing where the FDA and the fucking, uh, what is it, like three or four different government bodies have already rolled back shit that they said was safety issues that aren't safety issues anymore. Like, for instance, nobody's flying, right? So right. guess what you're allowed to take on the plane right now? You can take water again, finally? You can, take awesome. any, you can take any bottle of hand sanitizer or water that's over, like, this amount that they told us wasn't safe to begin with. 
Dude, and this goes all the way over there. They lifted restrictions on who could make respirators. Respirators and ventilators being the biggest way to stop this thing. And wait for it. People can print those with a PDF on 3D printers, but it wasn't legal. Really? Yes. That's something to look into. That might be a good reason to find. And the other, thing, the other thing that's scaring me, and this isn't being talked about nearly enough in my opinion, right, is that when you test positive for COVID SARS-2, I only call it SARS-2 because that's what it is. I don't stand by the Chinese government getting to rebrand a pandemic. Right. When you test positive for SARS-2, right, there is a list that you go on, okay? In mm-hmm. that list, uh, it is a HIPAA oath violation to share that that information. That's doctor-patient confidentiality, right? Yeah. So they say that it's a public risk, so they can't disclose that information, and it violates HIPAA. Meanwhile, the government gets that list. So the government yeah. is now compiling a secret list of people that are infected. And this is what I'm telling, me and Tovar have been telling everybody that. If you get sick with this, don't you tell fucking anybody. Yep. Yeah. Like, if you have to go to the hospital, you have to go to the hospital. But if you're one of the people that gets this, gets sick and gets better, keep it to your fucking self. Exactly. And the thing that's so crazy about this shit, right, is that now they're talking about a test that can identify the white cell echo so it can say if you ever got it. So now we're getting into, like, fucking minority report bullshit where they can go back, retroactively find out if you had this thing, even if you didn't because the test isn't precise, and then, boom, you're on a list. And you know what those right. lists usually end up? Like, in America, the last time we had lists like that, it ended up in Chinese internment camps. In Germany, yeah. it ended up concentration camps. These lists are yeah. not good. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's All the the consequences are terrifying. It's just, it's nothing it's nothing to play with or to, or to poo-poo or to think that's just crazy conspiracy talk. It's, you know, once they have these, you know, these things in place, these controllers in place, they have these lists made and things like that, it's, it's it's up to whoever's in charge at the time to use that and for whatever motivations they want to. Who who knows? But I got it. it that's, it's scary to think about, man. It, it just really is. I mean, the, the enemy that's the virus is scary. The the government change and – I mean, anything now can be under the guise of national security. Correct, you know? and that's exactly it. That's why when you were saying what's the end goal, the end goal is always just a little bit more power because here's what happens. They institute quasi-martial law like they're doing, stay-at-home orders, whatever, right? The government mm-hmm. just takes their little sweeping hand, they press it forward, and then they just take a little bit more of your rights. And then when everything goes back to normal, they might give you back some of those, but some of those they don't. And that's every time shit like this happens, even though it hasn't happened to this degree in our country, every time something similar. Look at 9-11. 9-11 is how we got the Patriot Act. I don't yeah, know that there's a, been a bigger infringement of personal liberties in my life than when the Patriot Act first went in. There hasn't. And that, that's the thing. This is 9-11 on an, this is like 9-11 everywhere. Dude, this is 9-11, 9/11 times 9-11. Right. <laughs> the conspiracy 1822, math motherfuckers. <laughs> this is 9-11 yeah. cubed. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like, and it, it's not like... And again, this is why, like, I get so freaked out about it, and you get freaked out about it. And, like, you and I, we're the people that get just diagnosed as lunatics. I mean, how many times have you been told you're crazy because you believe in conspiracy? I don't believe in conspiracy theories. I just question everything all the time till I arrive at what I think is a logical conclusion based on the information I have. Yeah, that's, that's what makes and sense And based on the information I have right now, China absolutely fucking did this. Like I'm not, they were I, having, I'm not ready to, to agree to. I I, I want to you know hope for the best in that situation and wouldn't think that another, you know, group of humans would inflict that on another group of humans. Oh, but, you mean you mean a government that has a history of doing that? Why don't you go to St. Paul and talk to some Hmong people? They'll tell you all about the merciful Chinese government. Yeah, well, it's us too. Why don't you I go mean, to Tibet? No, it's not us too. It's not this well, idea well, that we're on par with China is not even true. China is well, we literally did. the only country that has killed more people than we have over the course of our life. Yeah, but because that's based on population. But that, I'm saying no, well, they we had might three have... fucking genocides. In the time that America has been in existence, <laughs> China has committed three genocides. Three. Okay. And we're also the same country who, who has test biological weapons on a, on a civilian population. There. So we've sure. done that too. Sure. You know, I'm just saying it's but still – all. we didn't people. openly gas most of the people in Tibet – on right. the fucking TV where every... And this is not conspiracy shit. This is information you can go and find. 
I know you yeah. already know it, but I'm saying more to the listeners. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely documentaries on. I mean, the whole thing is like, and that's why that's why I'm leaning so hard that China did it because the motive is okay. You have a bunch of people gathering in Hong Kong. You can't control it. I don't believe that China did this to be a giant global pandemic. I don't believe that. I think they did it because they're not allowed to gas protesters like they have at every other increment in time they've come across protesters. Talk to fucking Shanghai Shek and Taiwan about China. Like this shit is, they have a history of this shit. Just just allow yourself some room for, you know, for error on that. Because if if the United States wanted justification, just like we were talking about earlier, if they wanted justification to invade China for whatever reason, be it economic or, or just, you know, but that's not what you would do first. Economy. What you would do first is you would tank our economy because their economy is linked to us. You tank our economy, we get back through it through subsidies, then we declare war on This is exactly what you do if you want to go to war with China. You huh? sit around, you don't throw anything out about China yet, and you wait for your homeland economy to tank. As it tanks, that's when the quote-unquote new discoveries come out about what happened, and then you roll on China. And you wait, you wait even longer because right now Russia is starting to hit the peak of it. So now if Russia's got this virus, you've got this virus, you can prove China was involved in it. At the very least, even if they didn't design it, at the very least, China knew about it, they hid it, they rebranded it, they lied about the cure, and they lied about the numbers. That's proved. Like I'm not saying right. they like it could have also come out of a wet market in Wuhan. Like, that's fine. But if it did, they definitely used it to their own advantage. I mean, patients 1 through 10 are in Wuhan. Patient 11 is in Hong Kong. There's four cities in between there. How does it get there? The virus magically jumps from where it originates to exactly where it would be strategically advantaged for the Chinese government to have it? That's weird. And then they kill a doctor that was saying they did this? They killed his whole staff? They suppressed the story? They lie about the cure? I mean, there's too many things to say that it's coincidental at this point. Okay. Well, I, again, I, I just, you, know, you got to leave room for error when you don't have an absolute, you know, you, you're not seeing it, you're not smelling it, you're not tasting it, you're not going through the whole process. Oh, I agree with leave that. People. I mean, it's like 9-11. If the government didn't do 9-11, they took advantage of it. Same with China. If they didn't do this, they took advantage of it. Exactly. And, and then in the scenario you're playing out, I mean, there's a pretty, you know, well-supported conspiracy theory that that's a lot of the reason of why we entered World War II when we did and how yes. we did. Well, you know, and, we were coming and if you look at World War II, thing. China's regime is the only real unfinished business. They're the only Axis power that was allowed to just keep being China because we needed them because they own the world's banks. Right. So this is a biological, could this be a biological Pearl Harbor? Yeah, it could be the I don't same think kind it was, of see, thing. And this is the thing, I don't think that they thought it would spread like that. I, I think like, so if China, if Chinese government did this, right? I think that their main course was because because the one thing about this virus is it's super contagious. And even though the numbers have been shady, as we know with Italy and now us, the numbers of people that are dying are not nearly as much as they were telling us. Right. Like, so, what you, so what you have from, a, from an engineering standpoint, you have super communicable, not fatal. That's exactly what you would do if you want population control. And again, it's only because you're not allowed to gas them like you were with Loatians and like you were with Tibetans, like you were with fucking all the people that they fucking deal with because that's what China does. Right. And, and and speaking to your to your argument, you know, if if they release this and I would think the most wisest decision to do would be to make sure you have some kind of treatment for it or some kind of vaccination for it before you release it. Maybe the people that are dying or have died in China are nobody of any value within the system. You know, so they can afford to well, lose. Well, and I mean, the way that they're talking about this malaria drug, I mean, it sounds like the cure's already out there if you can afford it, right? Yeah. But I mean, it's like, it's, like it's it always goes back to Magic Johnson. Remember how bad HIV is if you're not rich. Right. Well, almost everybody can live with it now, but at the time, you're now, actually now, but right. not in the '80s or '90s, no. I guess. <laughs> Uh, let's but, see. But yeah, but I'm going to catch up. Hold on. I'm going to catch up with the chat because they're talking to us right here. Uh, the okay. tests for SARS-2 are whack as far as I understand. They're using a maximum about the time allowed to multiply simply over 40. You get a lot of noise and sample. I don't know what that means. That's a terrible comment. Uh, yes, thanks. <laughs> BioWare is terrifying. I've witnessed so many people subconsciously rubbing alcohol on their hands every 60 seconds and never touched anything. They're just paranoid only dying out there 
out of their skin letting yeah i mean that's i feel like that's fair though i mean i don't know i see myself I'm doing that shit when i go into like target yeah. now like if i smell anything in my head i'm like oh that's covid for sure i just got it yeah i actually masturbate with it now so it's yeah well sure I, I actually use covid for lubricant <laughs> i can't come unless it's sars yeah i thought your cum uh, was covid 18 isn't that right covid over 18 yeah <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I, I I read earlier today that it cannot enter your body through dry skin, cracks or open wounds. I mean, they don't – that's the thing about it, uh, King of Clubs 99. They don't really know. And all the stuff that's coming out, I mean, they told us before that it could live on four days on all surfaces. Now, paper's not one of the surfaces. They said before that heat doesn't kill it. Now, heat kills it. It just goes – they don't really know what it is. Yeah, and, and to speak on that, that's – who was the doctor's name? I can't remember. The doctor was on Rogan just yesterday's episode. Yeah, the guy from uh, U of M or no? Yesterday's episode, you mean? Yeah, yesterday. is a new doc. You should check that one out if you haven't seen it. I have it. not it's watched that more. yet. I will do that This COVID-19, if we're to believe it is what it is, was was discovered less than a year ago. I mean, yeah. they're still trying to understand less it. Less than six months ago. Less really than six months ago. So and that was what was bothering me most when this first started happening and everybody was, was just, you know, nah, it's not going to work. It's just a flu. Don't worry about it. I'm like, look, we don't know. They're still studying it. They're still trying to understand it. They don't know it's, you know, everything that makes up a flu. I, I'm not going to pretend to know much of it, but they're still trying to understand it yet. So there is no firm answer. So the, the spread, how long it lasts, how long, what surfaces it lasts on. Does it, what rate of mutation, if it's mutating. None of that stuff is known. You know, again, pretending that we know for sure that this is a natural thing that nobody created. They're still trying to understand that shit. And that's what's most scary to me. And, and again, I think the majority of the deaths that are going to happen in this country over this is because of that, that stubborn ignorance that so many of us have. Yeah. Well, I mean, look about, at those look at those spring breakers in Florida where 40 of them tested positive now. Yeah. I mean, and, and here's the other thing, too, that's super interesting about all this is that, it like... We don't know. And and you're right. Like, the audacity of people. I mean, look at how many people are still, like, I looked out my window. There's a playground, like, directly across the street from me. And there's still, like, 40 or 50 people playing basketball. Hands on each other playing basketball. Unreal. Right. And that's, like, you know, like, it doesn't it doesn't matter to some people, but that's going to matter to everybody, you know? Uh, the part that I'm, I'm curious about, and only because I've just started, you know, diving into documentaries about the Spanish flu recently because of this, was it it taught me that when Spanish flu happened, it happened in basically three stages. You know, there was a first, you know, wave yeah, of the but, okay look. That, that didn't kill anybody. It was just like a normal yeah, kind of bad yeah, flu. yeah. But okay, it, stop. It and got stronger and went around. So look, as look the, though, but that's this is the thing about the, this is the thing about the Spanish flu, and this I get so sick of people referencing that. Right, medically, we didn't even know what a virus was. Like, so this idea that this is the same thing or it works in the same way, we didn't even understand cognizantly as people that washing your hands stopped you from getting sick. No, that's not the problem. But yeah, that, that's that's why it spread, and that's why it can go. What I'm talking about is as it did spread, it mutated. It got stronger. The second yes. wave of the yeah. flu killed people almost on the day that they got it, within hours of bringing it, while it was the same flu. It was just yeah. a mutated stronger version well, of what and came around. You know what's interesting that nobody's talking about to me is how many scientist papers I read about three years ago that talked about it. There's one specifically from somebody at Mayo that was talking about how the flu shots will require any flu that sticks become a super virus. And he actually gave a timetable of two years before there is a, a giant worldwide pandemic due to flu shots. Because people were making themselves too vulnerable, right? No, no, because that... we're making ourselves vulnerable to something, and then as yeah. as our bodies get used to it, eventually the stuff they're the injecting becomes immune and mutates. That's why every year you need a new flu yeah. shot. It's so evolution. Yes, yeah, so what, what you're doing is you're giving this virus a point to evolve, and so now everything that comes out, I mean, just think of how many super viruses we've had in the last 10 years. I mean, there was swine flu. There was, you know, SARS, SARS-2. There's a bunch that I probably Everybody don't even remember. Uh, here's something I'm, I'm, I'm going to brag about now, and it mostly has to do because I've been poor most, most of my life. I've never had a flu shot ever. I've right. never paid to have Neither. a flu shot. I've had all my, vaccines, if, all my vaccines when I was a kid, never had a flu shot. Yeah, I had my whatever in the 1970s they were giving kids. That's what I had. And I think I had <laughs> mercury. For, uh, you were drinking mercury. Pretty much. And then whatever that one they give you, like uh, tetanus. I had a tetanus thing. 
Yeah, tetanus shot. Did they give you a tetanus shot? Yeah, I have that. But I've never had a flu shot. I just, I don't know, just dumb and poor, I guess. Was, All right, here, I'm going to try to catch up on these Twitch. Like, a lot of people are writing in. This is actually the most. I've never seen this audience write in such complete sentences, so I feel obligated to let them be heard. Right, go ahead, go for it. Usually it's like poopy fart, but now they're like fucking all geniuses. Everybody everybody in this chat room got their fucking degree, I guess. I wish I could read them as I'm listening to you. It's not possible on my phone. Well, that's why I'll read them to you, buddy. Uh, let's see here. We got uh, Bioware is terrifying. I've witnessed so many people. So, Oh, we already read that one. Uh, I'm not scared of a bug. My grandparents have died fighting for our freedom. The ones that are still alive... And actually, I can't read that word. I don't know. Would be, yeah, whatever. Nobody cares. It's not about killing dead people. Like, this is, I said this at the very beginning. It's so funny to me how many millennials I heard were against old people, and now I just hear them crying about their grandparents. Like, which is it? Shut up. Right. Uh, King of Clubs. I read earlier today that it can't enter your body. Yep, we already read that one. Uh, takes you down a germ theory road. Gonna take you down to germ theory road. Yeah, germ theory road. See, there you go. Adding parody yeah. music to this? This is for you, Joey. Thanks, my dear. Look at the athletes banned from sports from open wounds like wrestling. Yeah, no, I mean, that's fair. Uh, according to what I heard, no. They used to know Bloodborne. Yeah, they're arguing about that. Uh, I want to show China the sun. Hit the fucking button already. Wow, that's insane. Uh, yeah, that's... that's the only problem. Uh, who in the world knows 100% the truth? Well, yeah, I mean, that's... That's actually a good point, Rusty Grammar. The, the biggest problem with this is that we don't really have any real numbers yet. Like, as America goes through it, that's where the real numbers go. Because we can all agree China's, like, China's lying about their numbers, right, Joey? Yes. Okay, that's so we can all agree on that, right? So now you look at, okay, time-wise, right? You go to Australia. Well, what has Australia been dealing with most of last year? A fire. What do fires mm -hmm. cause? Respiratory issues. What does this affect? The respiratory system. So their death mm -hmm. toll is going to be higher than other people because they've been inhaling smoke for six months, right? Ooh, shit, that's a good point. Right, no, no, so check it out. Then you go to Italy, okay? Italy's medium age of people is right around 47. They have one of the oldest populations. They also have the highest per capita smokers. Again, what yeah. does it affect? So there's not really real numbers we have to go by yet. I mean, Iran's not giving us real numbers. Pakistan's not giving us real numbers. China's not giving us real numbers. America seems to be having real numbers, and this is coming around right around 3%. Now, if it keeps doubling like they say it's going to, that's something different for sure. I mean, it's obviously more than a flu because it canceled the NBA, but everything we have right now that's factually reporting to us has some kind of outlying issues that would make this worse for them. So we don't really have any real numbers on it. You, you mentioning those two things made me think of something else, and something else that I'm that I'm regretting now, is you, you remember they were having those health issues surrounding vape products, right? Yes. So we have a population here of of young healthy kids who have uh, ingested a lot of vape, and also myself, you know that's why I've stopped doing vape, as I was you know getting kind of freaked out about all the warning signs, all that, and not not knowing what it was going into you and all that, uh, and went back just to regular weed. You don't Same. have to do that, though. Like, the main thing with the vapes in our country, like, because I know people that were shady as fuck. Like, they were doing the crack thing. They were just putting the whip in it, man. It's not just the vaping, the, the flour. I'm talking about the vape oil. Yeah, yeah. In the vape oil, what was happening is people would buy a cartridge. They would split it up in two, and they would add uh, vitamin E because it looks like oil. They would stir it up. If you inhale vitamin E, it's a super big lung problem. And the thing about people like you that got scared, that scare tactic was literally perpetrated by the tobacco industry because they want to get rid of marijuana products at all costs. Like they threw so much money. Look into tobacco and alcohol lobbying money against the vaporized. They put almost twice their yearly budget in hyping that pandemic when it happened. Oh, I believe that. But I do feel a, a weakened lung capacity, you know, because since smoking those that's well but i mean do you also think that's because you're old and fat and you stopped working out right i mean because yeah. you were you were going to the gym every day you were getting bigger and now you're not that, that's probably linked more to that than the juices unless be. you're one of the idiots that was buying fucking like hawaiian punch and monopoly cartridges and here's here's my hot take i cannot <laughs> feel sorry for anybody that got fucked over by monopoly cartridges oh yeah you just thought hasbro was getting in the weed game you fucking deserve this <laughs> <laughs> no, I never, I never had the pleasure. Right. Okay. Um, here, we're gonna try and get, uh, get caught up here quick. Uh, show shine of the sun. I hate that one. Uh, yeah. Somebody put Scott. Sorry, we have a one percent of being right because he has that math thing. That's true. Uh, 
I could not agree more. Who knows what the real truth is? Yeah, there's just a lot of extenuating circumstances to the numbers we're being given. And if you're going to drive it into a pandemic, that's what you want to focus on is the hyperbole. That's why I give this channel the number trackers, all the stuff to look at it. And, you know, the biggest thing I can tell you, and I, I've been doing this for about three months now, uh, when, when Donald Trump gives a speech, right, listen to it. Go watch him speak. Do not watch the news outlets. Watch him speak. Form your own opinion, and then go back and watch the parts that are being taken out of context and this and that. It happens on both sides, but it's interesting when you interact with the real thing. And the same thing is true with coronavirus. If you interact with the real numbers, you start to get a little bit less panicked than if you're watching the news. The news is basically telling us it's fucking Stephen King's The Stand outside, and that's just not the case. Well, of that said... I, I talk to people who are in, uh, who are first responders. I've talked to people who are in healthcare, and they are seeing the effects with their own eyes from, you know, there. And sure. they are telling me that it, it affects everybody. It's not just old people. It's people of all ages. And the people who are affected the hardest, the, the lungs filling up with fluid, you know, it, it, yeah. they're they're traumatized oh, I mean, by what they're seeing. Yeah, they're, so they're seeing something. They're definitely seeing something, and there's, there's something But those very people would also about. be horrified by watching somebody die of influenza because influenza can do the same thing. Well, these are medical lung, professionals. Lung, dude, <laughs> lung, lung, shit, lung shit in general is one of the yeah. most horrific deaths ever. Like, talk to these people that talk to you about that if they've ever seen somebody die of lung cancer. It's the same thing. When your lungs these shut these down... ER, these are ER nurses and, 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 and fire department workers and people that I'm talking about, they they have a legitimate fear. It's a very, it's a distinctly yes, well, different. But having, yeah. having a fear, sometimes if you have an intellectual certification, like you're an EM or you're a fire department or you're a first responder, your emotional response will override your intellect. If you look at the numbers as they're playing out right here in America, we were misled as to the numbers. Now, if it keeps doubling like they say it's going to be, but we're already behind Italy's track, we're already under what they said we would do. And that's the thing. It's not like we gave them we gave them a full week and we are sub significantly lower death total than what they said we would be at. Significantly. Well, we're, we're directly into the the the, warn the last warning that Trump gave in regards to this. Uh, it was just a week ago. He said the next two weeks are going to be uh, can be really bad. Right, but so they said that about this week. Right, in the middle of that right now. So a week from now, it's it could be considerably worse. I mean, it's not going to. But even it if it even if it doubles, it's at seven. Much. It's at seven thousand people today. Even if that number doubles, that's fourteen thousand. That's still almost nothing. Like the numbers it's, don't lie. It's hard. It's hard for me to just just accept that because it's. It's not nothing unless you're you're the one experiencing it. So we got to. Well, yeah, we but okay, but, but I'm saying from a from a population this. standpoint versus the number of people dying of this, substantially less. They told us this yeah. week we would double Italy. Italy has doubled us already. Don't look guard down. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm going outside. I'm not saying that I don't believe them or anything. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying that. The severity of death on this seems to have been misled because, wait for it, they could use it to manipulate manipulate us and gain power. So they're going to do that. Yeah, I, and yes, nobody you, nobody I, wants this pandemic to last all summer more than Trump. That's the key to his reelection. If this lasts all summer, that dude gets reelected immediately. Well, you're better than me. I don't think we're going to have an election. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's I the other thing too is that if this gets us involved in a war in China, then we don't have an election. Right. You don't have to have an election we're, at a time of war. Maybe if we're not in a war. If we're just in a war with a virus. I think this is going to go longer than a lot of people are hoping. Yeah, I mean, they, but but they would have to declare war. If we're at a time of war, they can suspend the election. And that's that's something to think about. But the other thing is, think about how nobody's paying attention to the Democratic primary. Nobody's talking. You rarely see anything except for your hardcore Bernie bros even talking about that because there's something more important going on. Yeah. And so what's happening is they've effectively... At this point, if everything, let's say everything clears up tomorrow, which it's not going to, but let's say everything's back to work next week, okay? You mm -hmm. have already cut the campaign trail almost in half. Yeah. And that can yeah. only favor the incumbent. That is, it, it's definitely, like you said, everything should be considered, you know? I definitely, it's on the table for me as, as if, I, if nothing else, like you said, they don't have to be doing something to take advantage of something. So that, you know... I, I have to consider it as a possibility. <laughs> Mikey Tumbo yeah. said, Donald fucking Baskins. <laughs> pretty good. Have you watched Tiger King yet? I've watched part. How far did I get? Oh, I man. I'm in episode five. 
maybe yeah yeah oh god it's so good it's uh, it's just fucking shit just keeps getting crazier and crazier yeah uh well hey i'm actually <laughs> running <laughs> overtime i kept you longer than i intended thank you for calling in and uh we i'd like to have you back and talk some more conspiracy theories sometime well uh Corey, i'm not going anywhere since yeah no so. me neither maybe maybe we'll make this a little uh segment for you to promote your show and uh just talk because you're one of the few people that i like to you me and brian gray were just always the three people that could talk conspiracy theories because i respect your opinion because it's educated as is mine but we still none of us are closed off to anything you know let's let's see everything i want to see it all and then make an opinion exactly so thank you uh, tell everything. the people one more time where to get a hold of you if they like because i know you got a podcast i know you got the uh the what neck tattoo and GED is that what it's called? Yeah, that's my album. That, that's like, I actually released that free uh, on my as a podcast episode. So if you want to hear my stand up comedy, did you really? You that's that awesome. Cool. Yeah, it's, it, it's I just released the whole album as a as an episode. Once I made my money on the album production, it's free now. Uh, but go to filterfreeamerica.com, filterfreeamerica, America misspelled with the letter K dot com, and that's my my website, my podcast. You can contact me there. And right. you can find episodes with Corey. Corey's on there with a really, really good episode on there. Yeah, we were talking about so, this, actually. Yeah, Wait, did that one um, ever go up or no? No, that was the one that everything happened within 48 hours of yeah, yeah, yeah. us talking. It didn't make a sense. That'd but be interesting, that'd was, be interesting like, to just hear how devout I was about it then versus now. Uh, Very, very similar. Yeah. As I remember. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much. Uh, we will. I will be in touch with you, and we will. We will definitely have you back. These people. This this chat room's blowing up. They love conspiracy theories on this channel. Awesome. I'll, I'll do you the same favor. We can do something on mine because I'm all hooked up to record over online too. So. Yeah. Well, I'm not we'll using that Zoom because it reports. Uh, I don't give a. F well, come on. If they're good, we're going to find you through Zoom. No, man. Find this you is, that's person. the exact kind of lazy attitude that's going to get you pinched, Joey. <laughs> Trust me, I'm You're on like that fucking list. mobster that's too good to check his rearview mirror because he's done it a hundred times. Fair enough. All right, buddy. We'll Thank you so we'll much for calling in, buddy. I love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye. That is uh, my heterosexual life mate, Joey Vincent. Let's uh, let's get caught up on some stuff. That's a, a fucking really weird thing. Ah, uh, fucking, it's just it's it's a crazy time out there, guys. That's that's what we uh, that's what we ultimately are getting to, and that's what uh everybody should think of really i mean it's it's you gotta watch out let's see here if we got this hold on one second let's see there we go i don't know if that's right let's fucking hold on hold on Well, it was a weird one today, right? It, uh, it's, uh, you know, whatever the fuck it was. We had a, uh, we had a lot. All right, let's get caught up on all this. I was trying to get stuff rolling, but it didn't really work. So, uh, we'll try to get that going. All right, here we go. We're going to viral thing considering absolutely. Gonna... No, Rusty Grammar, you're absolutely right. Uh, Insert penis joke to break the mood of seriousness. Mikey Two Milks, not liking it. Spending the last few minutes of his birthday, not liking this and wanting penis jokes. Uh, you're a dick bag. Love you, buddy. Uh, King of Clubs, last time I had the flu and pneumonia shot, I ended up in the hospital. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know so many people that get sick from those flu shots. I think vaccinations are absolutely cru crucial, but I haven't had a flu shot ever, and I'm fine. I've gotten the flu maybe once in my life. Uh, but yours hangs, yeah. Key takeaway. Out of chaos comes order. New world order. Take away freedom. Won't be seen that moment. Yeah, no, that's that's about it, man. The moment that they take away your freedom, you rarely see it again. Even what's really funny is look at how much they're giving back to maintain control and maintain the businesses as we went through earlier in the show. That's, I mean, that's a thing that happens. Uh, the news is only a horror flick. Yeah, no, the news is a horror show for sure. It's just a ratings thing. Donald fucking bat. Donald fucking Baskins fed his wife to a goddamn tiger. Wasn't it dark brand? Yeah, maybe. I don't fucking know. I mean, who the fuck, who the fuck really knows anymore? You know, it's it's like, whatever. You guys hear that? Okay, hold on. Let's let's see if we can. I 
I think it's spelled wrong. Hold on. I had one more thing I wanted to share with you guys, but it just doesn't seem like it's wanting to. There it is, I think. Yes, I found it. Okay, so here is a great article on... Oh, no, that's not it at all. Oh, some noises. What happened? Somebody cheered? King Club's cheer. Thank you. Thank you for cheering. Uh, big difference between legit vans and tape. Yeah, people were just putting in, like, things to sell more. That's what they were doing. Matt, do I read an article? If I remember correctly, they are no flying. Yep. The next forever is going to be worse. It's going to be called the new normal. Yeah, I agree. The, the next stage in this is going to be way worse. Uh, Matt Doima did two episodes of FFA. Yep, Filter Free America. That's America spelled with a K. You can find more on Joey. He does a lot of that stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, all hail Tom. You're right. Hey, Tom. Tom, what's up? How we, how's Tom? Tom's good? What up, Tom? Hey, Tom. Hey. It's not a theory. It's not a conspiracy. It's called reality. Well, it's a conspiracy theory when it's not the normal view that's how it works good show happy birthday mike yeah we really wanted to make a good one for you on your birthday so i'm glad we were able to help uh i wish i could forward my stimulus check to you i still work full time and don't dude you can just cash it and send it to me on venmo man i uh i will know for sure whether or not i'm getting my shit by the end of this weekend so we will see what happens uh there's a lot of real weird bullshit with my i9 because uh my jobs don't exist if the comedy's not there and I might not be eligible for unemployment. It's real fucked up. So, yeah. I mean, if you want to send me your stimulus check, I will take it. Corey Adam Comedy at Venmo. We already made rent, so now we're starting to put the push in for rent for next month. <laughs> oh, God, do I need it. Um, also, don't forget, uh, you can watch these videos on Twitch after we're done. Or uh, I put them all on YouTube. So, uh, we're also trying to come up with a name. I really like Corey Adam's Twitch Corral, but everybody seems to hate that one. So, Hey, what's up, Mike Pradinsky? How are you? Good to see you, brother. Uh, tomorrow, show up. I'm probably going to have Alex on, and we're going to talk some wrestling. You'll like that. Uh, let's see. Birthday bits. Yeah, give everybody quick. Give me Mikey's birthday bits. I don't know if that's going to work, but I'm going to try it. Uh, otherwise, yeah, everything's good. We're going to check this out. We're going to be like everybody else, right? This is, this is our, our sweet Avengers moment. We have moved to the end phase. Look at that end phase. Pretty damn good. Yep, I left the alerts on there for you. So we can still do that. Just got to move them over just a little bit. There we go. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. None of this is possible without you. And that's something that I, I say every week, but it's absolutely true. Without you guys, there is no show. There's no nothing. I feel like we learned a lot. If you have any questions, comments, or concern, get a hold of me at Corey Adam Comedy. It's on Facebook. It's on Gmail. It's on Twitch. It's on Instagram. It's on Google+. Plus. Basically anywhere you want to be. Uh, this starts our watch. Uh, this was our first day of the third week. We're still trying to find that sweet, sweet spot. But Friday through Tuesday, we will be here. On Tuesdays, I may or may not be broadcasting this off the Steel Toe Show channel. Uh, we will keep you posted on that. But thank you guys so much. Uh, happy birthday once again to Mikey Two Milks. Uh, thank you, everybody, for donating. You guys have been awesome. That's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we just, we're just we just done at this point, right? Like, there's nothing else. So, uh, again, thank you guys so much. We will see you tomorrow with a brand new show. And uh, Mikey will be a year older. You guys are awesome. Have a great night.